Good morning. The City of Boston Zoning Board of Appeal for uh, March 22nd is now in session. This hearing is being conducted in accordance with the applicable provisions of the open meeting law, including the updated provisions enacted by the legislature last year. The new law allows the board to continue its practice of holding virtual hearings until July 15th, 2022. This hearing of the board is being held remotely via the Zoom webinar event platform. This hearing is also being live streamed. In order to ensure this hearing of the board is open to the public, members of the public may access this hearing through telephone and video conferencing. The information for connecting to this hearing is listed on today's hearing agenda which is posted on the public notices page of the city's website, boston.gov. Members of the public will enter the virtual hearing as attendees, which means you will not see yourself on the screen and you will be muted throughout, unless administratively unmuted when asked to comment. Board members, applicants, and their attorneys or representatives will participate in the hearing as panelists and they will appear alongside the presentation materials when speaking. Panelists are strongly encouraged to keep video on while presenting to the board. As with our in-person meeting, comments and support will be followed by comments in opposition. The order of comments is as follows. Elected officials, representatives of elected officials and members of the public. The chair may limit the number of people called upon to offer comment and the time for commenting as time constraints require. For that reason, the board prefers to hear from members of the public who are most impacted by a project. That is those individuals who live closest to the project. If you wish to comment on an appeal, please click the raise hand button along the bottom of your screen in the Zoom webinar platform. Click it again and your hand should go down. When the, when the ambassador sees your hand, you will receive a request to unmute yourself. Select yes and you should be able to talk. If you are connected to the hearing by telephone, please press star nine to raise and lower your hand. You must press star six to unmute yourself after you receive the request from the host. Again, if you're here by telephone, please press star nine to raise and lower your hand and star six to unmute yourself. Those called upon to comment will be asked to state their name and address first and then can provide the comment. In the interest of time and to ensure that you have enough time to do so, please raise your hand as soon as Ms. The Fortune reads the address into the record. Do not raise your hand before the relevant address is called or the meeting host will not know to call on you at the appropriate time. These instructed instructions will be repeated throughout the hearing. So let's go um, and get a uh, roll call. Uh, Mr. Fortune? Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, Mr. Ehrlich? Oh, I'm here. Excellent. Ms. Dong? Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Mr. Ruggiero? Good morning, Madam Chair. Oh, good morning. Uh, Mr. Robinson? Good morning. Good morning. Am I missing anybody? Mr. Hampton. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Uh, so this is a six member board. Um, and so I'm just informing all applicants that they will need uh, five um, uh, votes in support of your project for the motion to carry. So this tells me that um, applicants do have the option to request an administrative deferral. Uh, Mr. Fortune? 
Thank you, Madam Chair. The first order of business is the approval of the hearing minutes of March 8th of 2022. We need a motion. Motion, motion to approve. approve. Second. All those in Second. favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next order is the extensions. Calling the first case. Case, uh, case BOA 659-702-86-88 north washington street name and address for the record please good morning dennis quilty attorney representing the uh, appellant um can you hear me all right yes thank you mr thank quilty you. thank you for 8688 uh, north washington street the board originally granted this relief on may 26th of 2017. the case was appealed to superior court and so is the subject to litigation tolling the court case was dismissed on June 5th of 2019 with litigation tolling. The new expiration of the relief would have been May 16th of 2021. However, the COVID-19 pandemic occurred, so the relief is subject to COVID tolling as well. The board previously granted an extension to this matter, but that was unnecessary because of tolling. With COVID tolling, the new expiration date for relief is August 21st of 2022. I recommend that the board confirm for the record, the relief remains valid until that date. The applicant now also requests an additional extension of May 4th of 2023. I recommend that the board grant that additional extension if it determines that it is appropriate under the circumstances, taking into account that this would only be the applicant's first necessary extension. May I have a motion? Well, motion to concur with the recommendation. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Madam Chair, the next case is being withdrawn, but I'm going to call it in for the record. Case BOA 927849, 48 to 62 Brookline Avenue. I know Mr. Quilty is on. Can you just put your name and record for the record, please? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Dennis Quilty, attorney representing the appellant at this location. Uh, further to discussions I've had with um, attorney Broom. Uh, we withdraw this matter, and I have filed as of yesterday a request for a uh, uh, board final arbiter on this. This is a, a matter concerning right. the expiration right. date. Yes, yes. Okay, so may I have a motion, please? Motion for denial without prejudice. Is there a second. second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Calling the next case for extension, case BOA 909-744-11 Ruggles Street. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Mark Lacasse, Lacasse Law, 75 Arlington Street in Boston, attorney for the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Lacasse. This is in regards to 11 Ruggles Street. The board originally granted this relief on March 29th of 2019, and it granted the first extension of, re of that relief until March 29th of 2022. However, that extension was unnecessary. With tolling, the original re relief remains valid until July 4th of 2022. I recommend that the board confirm for the record that relief remains valid until that date. The applicant now also requests an additional extension until July 4th of 2023. I recommend that the board grant that additional extension if it determines that it's appropriate under the circumstances, taking into account that this would only be the applicant's first necessary extension. Motion to concur with the recommendation. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Calling the next case for rediscussion, case BOA 1258629, 39 Hancock Street. This is the combined lot of 2,881 square feet and another lot of 2,304 square feet to create one new lot totaling 5,185 square feet to be known as 39 Hancock and erecting new, <coughs> reduced from a four family to a three family residential structure with five off street parking. The violations article 65, section 42, conforming to an existing building alignment. Article 65, section nine, the lot width is insufficient. Article 65, section nine, lot frontage is insufficient. Article 65, section nine, the floor area ratio is excessive. Article 65, section nine, the building has excessive in stories. Article 65, Section 9, the front yard is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, side yard is insufficient. And Article 65, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Jeff Drago with the Law Office of Drago and Toscano with the business address of 11 Beacon Street. 
uh, representing the owner developer Willie Mandrell uh, for the project at 39 Hancock Street. Uh, as was mentioned, so this project had been deferred and has been modified since that last deferral. Um, we have removed uh, a fourth unit, so we are now at three units, residential units, and five parking spaces. In making that modification, we've removed uh, violations and modified some violations. We eliminated the height and feet, uh, going down from 39 feet, 5 inches to 31 feet, and 6 inches. We also eliminated the use violation because we have now gone from a four unit building to a 3F, which is allowed in the district. We've also reduced our FAR coming from a 1.2 down to a 0.78 FAR. So, um, so Councillor, just as I've always stated in the past to you, we are kind of not interested on in where you started off, but where you, where you bounce off from the from the zoning so tell me so obviously this is a 3f district what's the lot size on this so this is a 3f 5000 district combined we have two lots madam chair that equals 5185 square feet okay and so please talk through the violations sure um our violations are lot width and lot frontage so 50 would be required, we have 38 feet, two inches. Uh, FAR, 0.5 would be allowed, we are now at 0.78. Height, uh, I mentioned we did remove uh, stories, but we, I'm uh, sorry, feet, we do still have stories. So we have three stories and two and a half feet is what's allowed, but that's typical of this area, it's a 3F district. Side yard, um, although we do have a driveway, um, we do have uh, on the right side our driveway, but we have one foot on the left-hand side um, and five feet would be required, but there is a driveway on the left-hand side as well to the neighboring building. Uh, front yard, we actually have seven foot six and 15 would be required. We were specifically asked to match the building next to us and working with the community. Uh, rare setback, 18 would be required because of the shallow lot. Uh, exception and we are at 10 um, and I mentioned the other uh, the violations that we we did eliminate uh, I can go over the floor plan with you Paul. um so concern there's no roof deck proposed there is not there's only uh, two front decks uh, at the front side of the building okay and just tell us uh, will any of the units be accessible they will. The first floor unit is accessible via ramp. It comes around the side of the building from where the parking uh, would line up and comes in right through the front. Okay. And speak to us about how the parking is proposed to work and tell us what sheet we should be looking at. So the, there is a um, f uh, certified plot plan that lays this out. Um, I, don't know, I, I don't know if are the plan's up right now. There's a whole certified plot plan section, um, and it shows five parking spaces. What we've done is the uh, the the uh, the lot that abuts Pace and Ave has five angle parking spaces. Uh, that would be uh, the parking would be accessed through Hancock on a ten foot driveway. That would come down the side of the building and enter those diagonal spots. Originally, we had a curb cut along Payson, so you would enter through Hancock, exit through Payson, and working with the community, they wanted that sealed off, uh, just some grass area and fencing because Payson Ave has had a lot of vehicular issues with cars racing down the street, so we have everything entering and entering along Hancock. When you pull out of those spaces, you can back up. We have a paver area or a 10-foot paver area in the back that those cars would back into and then be able to pull out uh, the front way through Hancock. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are good. I think uh, the scale and height of the current proposal uh, fits on Hancock Street. It's, it is tight um, on the sort of side yard dimensions, but it is up against uh, um, a retail uh, uh, at the corner. Um, so I, no, no real questions uh, about the proposal. Okay. Um, any questions from the board? 
Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Denise DeSantos here from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. I would like to go on record and state that the applicant has met with the community a few different times and has met with the community's needs. Um, they have direct abutter support and Main Street support. At this time, then <coughs> our office would like to defer to the board. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McEachern, City Council, Frank Baker's office would like to go on record and support. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we have letters of support as well. Is there anything from Mr. D'Amico on this? I'm Madam Chair, there is a there is a maneuverability diagram on A100 um, that does show how the vehicle access and um, backing up into the area that uh, council sort of explained. It seems to work fairly well, not perfect, but I think it might. Yeah, uh, Mr. Fortune, anything on the record from uh, Mr. D'Amico? No, Madam Chair, there's nothing from Mr. Duke. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Doss, anybody else? Yeah, I do have a raise hand from Joseph. Um, Joseph, are you looking to give testimony on this case? If not, I will lower your hand. Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Joseph? I'm sorry, was that a question for me? Yeah, your hand is raised. Are you looking to give testimony on this? You just did. Oh, you did? Okay, sorry. Yeah, all right. yeah so, oh, sorry, we just testified. No worry, I have no additional raise hand. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve with BPDA design review um, and uh, focusing a little, make sure that there's adequate buffering on Pace and Ave for the parking. Second. Okay. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Before we, before we begin our 930 hearings, just a reminder, this is a six member board and our applicants need five members in support of their project for the motion to carry thus um, um, applicants do have the option for asking for an administrative deferral thank you madam chair i'm going to call the 9 30 hearings are there any deferrals or withdrawals for the 9 30 if you could just give me the address first please Hearing none, I'll call the first case. Hi, I, I have a deferral. Sure, what's the address, ma'am? Um, it's 1472 Center Street, BOA 12734. Hold on two seconds. Well, the record calling BOA 1273426, 1472 Center Street. Name and address for the record, please. Um, this is Chloe Manning representing Arthur Chu's office, 1 Billings Road, Quincy, Mass. Uh, what are you are you requesting a deferral? We're requesting a deferral uh, to revise the plans based on neighborhood feedback. Okay, um, and how long do you think that will take? Um, maybe two few months. A few months. So is June perfect for you? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Motion for deferral. Motion to defer. Is there second. a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The date, please. You'll have a June seventh at eleven thirty. Thank you. Welcome. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for nine thirty? Hearing none, I'll call the first case. Calling case BOA one two nine five three five four six Yarmouth Street. This is to remove the existing fire escape and replace with rear porches and exterior fire stair, and removing the existing ground level deck and building new patio and fencing. The violations Article 64, Section 9.4, Townhouse, Row House Extension. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Ryan Spitz of Council to Adams and Morancy with the business address of 350 West Broadway. Here with me today is the owner uh, and also slash architect, Mr. David O'Sullivan. Um, as stated, this is a proposal to remove an existing fire escape on the rear of the property and replaced with new rear porches and a new exterior fire stair for safer means of egress. On the first and second floor, a window will be converted into a door for a means of egress. 
On the third floor, a whole new door opening will be constructed for egress. The decks will be approximately six feet by 12 feet. Also, an existing ground floor patio will be replaced with a smaller size patio paver at approximately 11 feet by 10 feet. And also, a six foot wood fence will be included in the scope of the work. Uh, the parking area, as you'll see from these plans, will remain the same. At this point in time, I, I can open it up uh, for questions, uh, but prior to then, uh, the owner did have a preliminary discussion with the South End Landmarks, um, and under item three, under the general guidelines, it does not apply as it is not in the front of the building or nor visible uh, from uh, on top of the roof, it's nor visible. So in the rear, this, the, the standards do not apply here for the South End Landmarks. So um, are you saying that this is not bracket supported then? Um, I'm going to have to defer. David, it, would you say this is bracket supported? No, um, it is supported on steel posts, thin steel posts, and metal railings, much like most of the others down the street are. So there's two posts coming down for the um, deck, and then a couple posts at the end for the stairwells. So what second means of egress provided in, t in the interior of the building, and now you're moving it to the exterior? Is that what's happening here? No, there was an existing fire escape that came down from the third floor, second floor, first floor, with a ladder to the ground um, that existed now connecting windows and fire escape. And this is to replace that with the decks and the stair. Okay. It's a little unusual in the sense that my neighbor to my left from the back, it sticks out and their fire escape from the front and my neighbor to the right of me sticks out farther than me and they have a separate fire escape. So instead of being able to have a balcony that connects units, there's no ability on my unit to connect to another one, hence the need for the stair. Okay, and, and did you uh, check any other options that would give you um, a less, um, a less uh, impactful project in the rear yard? Um, as far as the decks or the stairs you're talking stairs stairs yeah. i had looked um i had looked at a spiral stair um going down um but was thinking that this was much safer and where the buildings on either side of me stick out beyond me mm -hmm. didn't think this was too much of an impact um okay cool thank you how are the plans mr robinson uh plans are good and and, and i agree it both of his abutters do protrude out back into the alleyway, so I, I think it's uh, it'll be fairly minimal in terms of its visual impact on the rear alley um, as designed. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition to this proposal? Hi, yes. Um, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. Kim Crusula with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office held an abutters meeting in February of 2022 where support was shown by the abutters. They also received the support of the Cosmopolitan Neighborhood Association. At this time, our office would like to defer to the board on this matter. Thank you. Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board. Ana Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support based on feedback from abutters and no issues reported by the Cosmopolitan Neighborhood Association. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary, we have a couple others of support. Thank you. Okay, I do have one raised hand. Um, go ahead, concerned neighbor. You've been unmuted. Can you state your name and full address for the record, please? Uh, my name is James O'Connor. I was calling about uh, that. I just hear the fourteen seventy two was deferred. Can you can you take back. that? Can you take that offline, please? Um, Mr. Hampton, did the BPDA have a recommendation on this? Uh. uh no official recommendation, but we understand based on what the existing conditions are and the problem with connecting to the buildings. Usually we support uh, bracket only, but since this is a fire escape, uh, we can we don't need design review, but we can go on record as a, in support of this proposal. Thank you. May I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve. Sorry. Is there a second? All those in favor? All uh, right. Uh, any, any opposed? Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling VOA 128 9700 559 R. Rear.
East Fifth Street. This is a structure, it is a three story, three condo building. Owner of condo three will construct a porch measuring six by eight to both condo three and condo two. Upon com completion, owner of condo two will reimburse the owner for condo three for half the total cost. The violations Article 68, Section 29, roof structure restrictions, the access. Article 68, Section 8, insufficient side yard setback. And Article 68, Section 8, insufficient rear yard setback. Name and address for the record. Mr. Mohan on? Hi, Bill has his hand raised. Give me one second. Oh. Okay, I'll go to the next case. Oh, he might be here. Bill, is that are you here for this proposal? Uh, I'm here. Okay, go ahead. You got it? Okay. Uh, my name is William Mohan. Uh, address is 59 Cotting Road in Norton, Massachusetts. I'm representing uh, Dana and Darren uh, Hopkinson, the owners uh, of uh, condo number three, third floor uh, at uh, 559R. We're also speaking for the owners of the second floor uh, that are going to be uh, involved in this as, as well. Uh, the uh, the uh, denial letter that, that we got in- Mr. Mohan. Yes. So, may I just kick it off and ask you, when was this project constructed? Uh, this project was constructed in, uh, two, 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 in uh, February of 2021. Okay. So that uh, that, was... That's, that, that's the date on the plans that you have. Okay. So this is new construction. Yes. And so if it's an R address, it needed to come to this board. Um, can you tell us, um, you know, were there any provisos? Because we probably approved it without, uh, without decks. Um, and so can you tell us what the need is for this decks now? The, the, the need for the decks is, is, is twofold. Uh, it's, it's not, they're not decks. There's six foot by six foot porches. In the, in the right rear of the building. Uh, there is no, there has nothing to do with the roof structure. Uh, it's, it's just the second floor and the third floor will have a deck, decks uh, six feet by six feet uh, coming off the kitchen. Uh, there's two reasons for that. Number one, uh, this uh, structure has, uh, uh, has a sprinkler system and is so it only has one method of egress, and that's the all stairways to the front door. Uh, we're concerned in, in two cases. Number one, uh, the, the, the first and, and most important is, uh, is uh, safety. Uh, we would like to uh, have a, uh, uh, a ladder, fire ladder, you know, from the third floor to the second floor and the second floor to the first floor just in case uh, there's a, uh, there's, uh, we can't get out the front door. Okay, uh, hold on, hold on. Yeah. I'm a little bit confused okay. because the drawing in front of us does show us a roof deck. Um, so is the roof deck part of the plan or not? No, 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 that was, that, that, I, I don't know why you have that plan. Uh, there is no roof deck. We're not touching the roof. We had, we had filed in 2021, we had filed for a roof deck and we submitted plans, uh, but uh, we were told that there was a verbal agreement with the neighborhood and neighborhood association uh, never to put a roof deck on that building, uh, okay. which which was okay. not told to us. Okay. Uh, but we we. we so, Mr. Uh, Burton, may I ask you one more question? Surely. Your rear your rear yard is insufficient. So tell me your distance from your building to the rear yard and to the building behind you, because this is what makes it hard for us because, okay. because we have heard this case, we've approved plans for this case, and then it gets difficult when um, they come into us again, you know, a couple of years later, when um, with, with requests for things that might have been already sorted out uh, during the initial hearing. Okay, uh, I'd be happy to. The uh, and that's one of the points that I, I would like to make. 
Uh, if you look at the plot plan that was submitted uh, with this, and, and we have two different drawings that, that were submitted by two different companies, uh, the the distance from the uh, for the rear uh, is is listed as as uh, three three point nine feet. Uh, now, there's a problem with that now because the rear neighbor uh, put in a fence, and in order to get around the tree, uh, most of that fence <laughs> is on our property. Now, that's, that's, that, that can be uh, adjudicated in, a, in another, at another time with another uh, committee, but that's one of the, the problems that we have. And uh, uh, and okay. in some, uh, so, but the the, so, uh, the so let me just can you can just answer my question because I might have missed it. What's the distance bef between the proposed deck and the, and your property line? There's 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 no there's no difference. It's three point nine feet. That's that's the distance from from the house. The the, the deck uh, porch, I should say fits into the right rear corner. Uh, and we, oh, made it, okay. we, made it, we made it six by six so that it doesn't increase the dis or shorten the distance to the rear or the distance to the side. These okay. are the same exact measurements as you approved when this was constructed, I believe in 2019. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are fine. Uh, uh, agree with the proponent. It, it aligns with the rear of the building, so it's not increasing or decreasing the setback. Um, there is a drawing in here that shows the roof deck access with a spiral stair. It is flagged in red, but it's not X'd out. But okay. I'm not sure why that's in there either. But I the basic yeah. proposal seems to be um, fitting within the context of the existing bill. So no, no questions. Any questions from the board? Uh, uh, Mr. Robinson, the, the uh, idea of a fire ladder from uh, three to two to one uh, in terms of second means of egress, um, that's a little on the shaky side, isn't, wouldn't you agree? I, I mean, it's not even, it's not required because the building apparently is sprinkled and so I think it's an extra means, I would assume, but exactly. I, I, I agree that it's not ideal either, but um, I think that's should be handled, uh, you know, that's not necessarily for us to, I think, understand or, or handle. Yeah. At this point. So, okay. Yeah, I don't disagree with you, Mr. Ehrlich. Yeah. Anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Hi, Madam Chair, members of the board, Haley Dillon, Mayor's Office, Neighbors Services. Um, this is one of those weird instances, like Madam Chair referred to, when I held the abutters meeting for this building in 2019, the neighbors and the neighborhood association agreed for no outdoor space, no roof decks, no decks, because this building is set back in the middle of other people's backyards. So they got the approval of the neighbors and they got their variances to build this house and the people who bought it didn't understand the agreement. Um, we do still have direct abutters in opposition to um, decks and roof decks, but we would like to defer to the board. Thank you. Good morning. Madam Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flynn's office. The council would like to go on record in opposition based on feedback from neighbors, abutters, and the Gate of Heaven Neighborhood Association who have all called attention to concerns on noise disruption and quality of life, of life issues for neighbors on three different streets, K Street, Fifth Street, and Sixth Street. Moreover, the previous project was supported by neighbors, the civic group, mayor's office, and councillor Flynn, specifically because there was no deck included in that proposal. Again, we, um, the council would like to oppose to, to the opposition from neighbors and the civic organization, as these quality of life issues have been significant concerns for years in the community, and unfortunately exacerbated over the course of the pandemic. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Solid, City Council at Large, Michael Flaherty. Council Flaherty would like to note that the building was permitted and being built with the proviso from this board that no roof deck be built due to various concerns from Director Butters. He has issues with the decks. Uh, therefore, Council Flaherty would like to go on record in strong opposition. Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I have no, no raised hands at this moment. Can you Madam give us Chair. 
Madam is Chair? This Mr. Is this Mr. Mohan? Give yes, us this, a, this, give this us a is. rebuttal. Uh, what the uh, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services failed to, to let the board know, we have, we have signed petitions from 62 neighbors okay. uh, support, strongly supporting this. Okay, uh, thank you. The, the, hold the, on, hold on, hold on, thank you, thank you. And you should, okay. you should have a copy of those petitions. Uh, they were in the ZBA folder. Thank you, we do, thank you. Now please, Ms. Ambassador, can you mute uh, Mr. Mohan? Can I have a motion, please? Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 before I, I do think that um, they're not asking for a lot, but unbeknownst to them, this was approved very recently with certain provisos, and I do think we need to stick to those. And it's unfortunate that they weren't informed of that at the time they bought their condo. Um, but that being said, I'd like to make a motion for the denial. Is there a second? Excuse Is there me? a second? Madam Chair, Chair, you know, I just want to clarify for the board that there, there, there are two provisos on this decision from 2019. They're for BPDA design review with attention to utilities and no building code relief. There's nothing about a roof deck in the board's decision on this case. Okay, but regardless, we do understand that it might have not been uh, because the plans might have come in without a roof deck. Oh. And that yeah. might be the what what we need to make sure we clarify when we do our minutes or make sure that it's memorialized in some way in the text in addition to having it memorialized in the plans. And I think as um, we talked about last week, this becomes more important as things go up to the registry. So um, Ms., uh, Mr. Ruggiero, you had a motion for denial? Correct. Is there a second? Okay. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Sorry about that. Calling the next case, calling VOA 129 4998 71 to 75 West Broadway. This is the change of legal occupant of existing unoccupied commercial unit to bank. Building occupants need to be changed from eight residential units and one commercial unit to eight residential units and bank. The violation is Article 68, Section 33, off street parking, Article 68, Section 7, <coughs> use and regulations. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Morancy. I'm an attorney with the business address of 350 West Broadway in South Boston. Madam Chair, members, I represent Jay Goldberg, who is the owner of the commercial unit at 7175 West Broadway and who is seeking to change its occupancy or to actually establish a legal occupancy for the commercial unit as a bank. Uh, the unit is 1,644 square feet. It is the ground floor unit in a building uh, that contains this ground floor commercial space and eight residential units above. The building was approved in May of 2019. Uh, at that time, it did in fact receive a variance for insufficient off-street parking as there is no parking associated with the building. My client would like to put in a bank tenant. He has had several banks approach him uh, with their interest in moving into the unit, uh, but none would enter into a lease uh, without having the occupancy in place. That occupancy requires a conditional use permit. And uh, for the record, I would posit that this specific site is an appropriate location for a bank, that the bank would not adversely affect the neighborhood, nor would there be any hazard to vehicles or pedestrians from the use. I don't believe a bank would create any nuisance, and uh, any bank uh, tenant would provide adequate and appropriate facilities for the proper operation of a bank at this location. Thank you. Mr. Marenzi, do we know what bank it is? No, as I say, um, a number of banks have approached my client, but they did not want to go through the permitting process themselves. Um, hence, my client wanted to establish the occupancy and then get back to the, uh, the, the banks that have expressed interest to select uh, which one would go in. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are good. Uh, no questions on the proposal. Anybody here to speak in support or opposition? Hi, Madam Chair, members of the board, Healy, Dillon, Mayor's Office, Neighborhood Services. We'd like to defer to the board. Thank you. 
Good morning, Madam Vice members of the board. I'm Calderon from Council President Flynn's office. The council would like to go on recording support based on feedback from neighbors and support from the West Broadway Neighborhood Association. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have one opposition letter. Thank Madam you. Chair, I have no raised hands. May I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Sir, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. <clears throat> calling the next case, calling VOA 129 008 Glade Avenue. This is to build a foundation and master bedroom with deck on the first and second and third floor. A violation of Article 9, Section 1, reconstruction and extension of a non conforming building. Article 55, Section 9, the floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 55, Section 9, the building height is excessive in feet. Article 55, Section 9, the building height is excessive in stories. And Article 55, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Keith Hensman, uh, 47 Kemp Burma Street. I'm sorry, your address again? Oh, I'm sorry. It's uh, 47 Ken Burma Street in Hull, Massachusetts. Okay. So please tell us what's being proposed. So we've proposed uh in addition that allows each unit to have an additional bedroom and ensuite bath and closet with it and the addition is off to the right side of the existing house and uh, we are maintaining the same building line of the rear wall of the house um, with the extension and um, the idea is to uh, keep the, the look and uh, historic character of the existing house with the addition. Okay, so tell us about the um, distance from the proposed edge of the addition to the side side lock line. And likewise so, with the lock uh, line. Okay, uh, let me start with the rear lock line. So. Uh, the existing rear porch is 17 and a half feet from the rear lot line, and we're proposing um, extending that existing uh, porch, uh, so no change to the rear yard setback. And what's and, required? Uh, the rear... Sorry, what's required under zoning? Uh, 20 feet, is, and, and we have 17 and a half. The, Okay. Rear wall of the house itself is uh, further beyond at 22 and a half feet. Okay, and tell us about and, this. Uh, yep, yeah, so the, um, the um, existing uh, side yard, the, the, the lot is, uh, existing lot is quite large, uh, and the um, side yard with the projecting bay will be in excess of 33 and a half feet. Uh, so we're, we're not encroaching on the side yard setback there. Uh, the opposite side of the building, uh, the left side of the building to the left lot line is uh, just shy of 10 feet, but uh, we're not coming close to that. We're proposing an addition on the opposite side of the building. How are the plans, um, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are good. Uh, you know, I think it's it is an oversized lot. I think the addition is fairly minimal. It is not changing any of the sort of side or rear yard um, as it currently sits. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward. One question: Are these owner occupied units or are these rental units? Yes. No, that's correct. They're owner occupied, and we have uh, several letters in support. One from a direct abutter at Six Glade. So let me ask you one last question. What is the size of the lot? So the lot is non-conforming. Uh, it's just over 7,500 square feet, and we're in a 2F9000 district, so would be required to be a 9,000 square foot lot. Yeah, the base lot would be 9,000, and then, um, yep, 4,500 for which each additional. Okay, uh, any questions from the board? Are, are there any renderings of, on the plans for what it would look like? 
Yes, there, there should be, uh, I believe on, on the first page of the PDF, there's a cover sheet um, and this has a view from the street. Perfect, that's it there. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Tiffany Caballero here from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. I would like to go on record to say this project proposal was approved by the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council Zoning Subcommittee back in January this year. Um, I did have no letters of uh, or testimony in opposition. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer judgment. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. No one else has anything else. Okay. Um, no, there are some comments from the BPDA. Yes, uh, Jeff, I was going to call on you. Any comments from the BPDA? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair, uh, members of the board. We recommend a denial without prejudice uh, based solely on the addition to the side. It's mainly a triple decker uh, street and the BPDA likes to keep the traditional triple-decker look. Uh, I know there's support for it, but it's just uh, a precedent that we really don't want to have broached. Thank you. Thank you. Um, given all that information, may I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve um, with BPDA design review. I think it's um, a reasonable ask for an owner-occupied uh, building. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I will just voice my, um, my, my vote in opposition because I do believe um, keeping the building form is important, but um, motion carries. Was it for design review? Yes. yes. Okay, cool. Next, next. Calling case. the next two cases, calling BOA 868 870 810 Canterbury Street. That's a companion case, BOA 868 875 812 Canterbury Street. This is for 810. This is planning to erect a two family home on 6,208 square foot lot. The violations, Article 67, Section 8, the two family detached dwelling unit is forbidden use. Article 67, Section 9, the minimum lot width requirement is insufficient. Article 67, Section 9, the minimum lot frontage is insufficient. Article 67, Section 9, the minimum usable open space per unit is insufficient. Article 67, Section 9, the front yard setback is insufficient. And Article 67, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. This is for 812 Canterbury, subdividing 812. Canterbury Street into two lots. Lot one will have 7,318 square feet. Lot two will have 6,028 square feet. The house at 812 will stay and a new house will be built at 810 Canterbury. The violation Article 67, Section 9, lot width is insufficient. Article 67, <coughs> Section 9, lot frontage is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Hey, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. Uh, my name is Christopher Davey. I live at 812 Canterbury Street. Tell us what's being proposed. Um, I'm looking to divide my lot and build a two two family. The original plan, it was my grandfather's house. I was going to buy the lot off him and build a two family for my sister and I. Um, we started going through the pro and he was going to live in 812. Um, we started the process. He passed away. There was a whole thing, you know, with probate and stuff. I ended up getting the house. COVID happened. Um, we still want to go through with the plans. Okay, so, yeah. so yes, please tell us what you're proposing to do. Um, just build a two two family house, and there's a there's a garage right now on the plans you can see of uh, the subdividing. That that creates like a pork chop lot. Now that I have access, I have the surveyor. Um, we're gonna just make it a straight line. So lot one will be like. 7,000 square feet and lot two will be 6,300. We're, we're gonna make, we're gonna uh, fix the the violations a little bit better. Okay, so, so this district is a uh, 1F6,000. So you're proposing the, um, the second house. So tell us about the second house. 
the one at 810 Canterbury Street. So it's a two family. Any occupancy in the basement? No occupancy in the basement. And no occupancy in the attic? Nope. Okay, will it be stick built? Yes. Okay. How will the, and tell us how parking is proposed to work? Um, there's going to be a proposed driveway with uh, two parking spaces out back. And will 812 Canterbury also have parking? Yes, 812 Canterbury will have parking. Okay. Um, let's just see. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are pretty straightforward. No, no question. I guess the, my only question is hearing the proponent, if he's going to change the lot dimensions, does that matter to us? I mean, I think uh, in terms of weighing in where we are now. Yes, you know, we usually care about that, but it seems that this is a one of 6,000, yep. and we very much very think that we're, that we're not creating um, serious de de deficits for the existing uh, building. Okay. Yep. So, uh, no, so, no question other than that um, okay. in terms of the proposed project. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support or in opposition to this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Udra Nochi with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, they did have, Christopher did have a community process. Only one person attended who was in support. My office did receive two letters of support for this. And he had met with the Neighborhood Association two or so years ago when they first proposed this and they didn't have an issue with it. Um, I contacted them again just to see if they were still feeling the same way and they said yes. And my office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary, Secretary here, we have a few uh, letters of support. And Madam Chair, I have no yes. ways. Thank you. Is anybody here from the city councilor's office? Yes, Madam Chair, Dustin from Councillor Worrell's office. We have, uh, have no no reason to oppose this project. Um, please, uh, Dustin, uh, put your last name on the record too. Dustin Gardner from City Council Worrell's office. Okay, thank you. Uh, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve BPDA design review. I'll second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Following the next case, calling BOA 1212750, 750 High Park Avenue. This is a raised 10 foot in, raised roof, 10 feet installed underground sewage, demo the interior, yes. and plan to convert to a car wash. Violation of Article 67, Section 8, use is, is conditional. Article 67, Section 9, insufficient side yard setback. Article 67, Section 9, insu insufficient rear yard setback. Article 9, Section 2, the change in the non-conforming use. Article 9, Section 1, extension of a non-conforming dimensional side yard. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, Clyde Nesbitt, 750 High Park Ave. The current owner. Um, basically, there's plenty of space behind the property. Um, so and first, first, first help us and describe what you have on site. So it's, curr it's currently a mechanic shop. It also has a bay door at the rear of the building where you already drive to the rear of the building already, which is the left side. Um, that's already that's already current. Um, so the, on, the only thing that we have is about 35 feet left at the back of the building. So there's plenty of space to drive behind the building. The whole building is just gonna be a touchless car wash. Um, no driving the car, we just drive into one place up and the car wash machines would do the rest. They would just go around the car, wash the vehicles, and then the vehicles would exit through the front of the building. So do you also have a, so let me understand what's happening on the lot right now. It's a auto repair. Is it also towing? Yes, ma'am. So it's, it's auto repair, it's towing, and now you want to add a, um, no, we're going to, um, remove the auto, the automotive and the towing, and it's just going to be a car wash. It's going to be a car wash, a complete car totally wash. Totally a car wash, nothing else. Okay, and so this is a 1F6000, so it's a residential district. Um, can you tell us how this would fit in with the neighbors around you? Um, I feel like it would be a great 
um, addition to the neighborhood, since there's already so many mechanic shops in the area, including one across the street, and which we own as well. Um, we plan on adding a dog, dog wash to help the neighborhood. So there's plenty of people that walk their dogs and everything, so they'll be able to come in and groom their dogs personally. Um, it'll also give jobs to the neighborhood. To, to no, 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 please. I, I, want, I don't want to hear about everything else. I want to okay. hear just about who your neighbors are. Are your neighbors also, my also neighbors, commercial use? Yes, are they we, had a, we had a meeting with them. They were... They seem to be okay with the property, um, with the whole idea. Our, our butters behind us were a complete 100% behind the idea of having a car wash there. Uh, we have a new uh, neighbor next door um, that his only uh, opposition was the snow removal, but we told him we would help him with that. And that okay, seemed and to this, be- This is, because I'm looking at, map, at Google Maps, this mm -hmm. is the residential piece. Okay, so tell us exactly then, the building, will the building be demolished? No. The building's going to stay as it is. Only thing we're going to do is um, raise the roof on the right side because the left side is already at the height that it needs to be. The right side just has to be raised about four or five feet. Okay. And then tell us about the queuing because um, we approved um, a project on uh, Blue Hill Ave. Mm -hmm. Uh, for a car wash where they maintained there was no queuing and there was no queuing on the street but subsequent to that I did notice there's, there's uh, actually quite a long line on Blue Hill Ave and then, oh. we've had the, and then we've had the issue with the car wash on American Legion so can you tell us how you're going to prevent queuing on the street? So we we actually have the property across the street. So to keep the park, to keep the cars off the street, we plan on creating a parking area across the street for the vehicles to wait. And there's a this substantial amount of yard space to the left to be in line on that 750 property already. But so tell us, what, tell us what the capacity is for queuing. How many vehicles can you have? So, so on the 750 property, we could have upwards to about 10 to 12 cars. Um, on the 749 side, where we plan to, to add the all, parking. All, all, all we want to um, hear is about 750 because that's. Oh, 750, it'd be, it'd be between 12, 10 and 15 cars. Okay. Will the, um, will the curb cut be reduced in any way? No, ma'am. No. No. So, um, so it will continue not to be accessible to pedestrians. What are your proposed hours of operation? From six to 10. Seven days a week? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let me just see. Uh, how are the plans, um, Mr. Robinson? Uh, I, I mean, I guess I would say the the general plan is fine in terms of the building. I think there's a lot of questions about the site plan and the access plan. Um, there is a, a very large curb cut now um, in place. However, it looks like they're gonna have to increase it the entire width of their property um, to make it work. So I think it's gonna exacerbate the issue and it does abut two residential edges. So. I feel like we need a little bit more information um, on how this proposal is actually going to fit in. Um, there won't. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Any questions from the board? Any other questions? Yep. Um, so just, I know there's a couple of different car washes and, and now I'm going to get too technical, but the automated one, is that, do the cars continuously move or is it one of these ones you pull in and the machine does all the work around you and Correct. then when you're done, so only one car can be in at a time? Yes, sir. Okay. And there's only one of those and the other two? No, there's going like, to be three. All three like that? Not yep. like the one with like, okay, all three of them are going to be like that? Yes, sir. Yep. Just, uh, Mr. Jared, the, the other two bays are called self-wash bays per the plan. Just so you know, they're not. That's why I ask, because it does okay. say self-wash bay, which is which is different. That's 
Yeah. Means the person's gonna get out of the car and use that. Oh no, they're there. all they're all gonna be the same. They're all gonna be it might just be a discrepancy with the architect, but it was, it's just gonna be all self serve. I mean not self serve, they're all gonna be automated, um, standalone. And will there be any vacuuming or drying or whatever? The, else the drying is gonna take oh sorry. Go ahead. The drying's gonna the drying's gonna take place in the base themselves. There may be one or two vacuum cleaners outside. Um but like we were saying, there's not going to be any curb cutting. If they have the line placed and actually incorrect, we're going to leave the curb as it sits because um, there's ample um, space there. But we currently use it as a tow yard, so it's going to be the same exact kind of design. Okay. Um, any other questions from the board? Is Seems like an opportunity for screening and buffering. Yes, um, yeah. Uh, tell us what's on the rear, on the rear of your property. So right now it's just open area. On the, the left bit, the left side of the building as it sits right now, it's actually a drive through bay already. We yes, use it all but, the time. But I'm, but I'm still kind of interested on what's on the rear of the building, on the rear lot behind the building. It's just parking, this is part of it. On the other lot? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I don't know why this- Okay, I'm looking at Google Maps. It looks like it's a residential area. It, is a, it is a residential. It's a residential I believe it's, uh, backyard behind. Didn't understand okay. the question. Uh, it, it is a residential building. Uh, oh, you're talking, okay, it's plenty of butters. Yeah, there's a house. There's two houses behind us. And are you proposing any screening, buffering, anything? Because you're gonna yeah, be so we plan on, pretty late. We, you're going to be open pretty late until 10. Are you going to, how, how are you proposing to protect them from getting uh, car lights in their, in their bedrooms or things like that? So we plan on putting up a wall. Um, those hours aren't completely set yet. We want to make sure the neighborhood's okay with those hours. We're willing to work with those hours when it comes to the neighborhood. That's not an issue. Um, but we plan on building a wall around the property to buffer the sound and the lights. It's not gonna, we're not gonna allow any motor in. Um, it's just, you come wash your car, you leave after you, you're done washing your vehicle. Madam Chair, just a quick question for the applicant. Why does the car wash have to be open till 10 o'clock at night? It doesn't have to, that's why I said we're open to adjusting the time. Okay, so this is, let me just see, this is, I don't, it's called an extension of a non-conforming use and a change, so it's a conditional use. So therefore we can put a bunch of conditions on this should we decide to approve this okay um so is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal good morning madam chair this is danielle fonseca with the mayor's office of neighborhood services and a butters meeting was hosted by our office on october 21st and during this meeting many of butters both residents and business owners did have concerns regarding the impact on traffic parking, noise. There were some environmental concerns in terms of the safety and impact of chemical waste, the hours of operation that are being proposed and pedestrian safety. Uh, the applicants addressed the butter's concerns by stating that they will be having an attendant there uh, to control the traffic, parking and loitering, and noise has to be respectful to the neighborhood. Um, they were instructed to contact the High Park Neighborhood Association regarding this proposal. Um, there was some confusion whether the applicants directly spoke with the president of the association and whether there was a plan to present at the meeting, but the High Park Neighborhood Association has stated that they do have concerns for this project and believe that they are seeking too many variances and again, echoing concerns for traffic. Uh, this project is close to Roslindale, so they tried to connect with the Clare Avenue community group, but there was no response due to the um, inactivity with that group at the moment. Our office has received two letters of opposition and 22 signatures in opposition for this project. At this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we do have those letters and we also have that signature page. And Madam Chair, I do have a few raised hands. I'll start with Kay Allen. Can you state your name and uh, address for the record, please? Good morning. My name is Kim Allen. I live at 110 Clare Avenue. I'm in a butter. I am concerned about the size and the of the project and the underground storage. I think this kind of business will add traffic, noise, and air pollution on Hyde Park Ave, which is already a busy thoroughfare. 
the hours are not conducive. I do appreciate the owner's willingness to be amenable to the neighborhood, but I just don't think this is the right project for this street. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and um, Mundo, you have sent a request to unmute you. Can you state your full name and address for the record, please? Yes, my name is Candida Mundo, 762 High Park Avenue. I just want to share with you that we more than 20 neighbors that never con were contacted. We have never met with anyone. No one never told us that was going to be an establishment car wash. That means that we had never met with anyone. We are opposed. More than 20 neighbors. We wrote a letter. It's signed. Uh, we are opposed to the car wash. We are next to the uh, 750 High Park Avenue. We are concerned about the health and the safety of all the pedestrians, the pets, the cyclists, the runners. The handicapped residents like myself, we are very concerned about the noise and the movement. And also, how are we going to get into our driveways? Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. OK. And then I do have additional raise hands. Jay Bohr, can you state your full name and address for the record, please? Actually, it's uh, Peter from Arrow Auto Body. For some reason, I was uh, knocked off the Zoom meeting. So I, uh, I'm actually on my uh, co-worker's uh, uh, computer right now. Uh, we are uh, we're in opposition of this altogether. We're very concerned, and we, so, and we think sorry, it's a real. I'm what, sorry. What's your address? Seven fifty two High Park Avenue. Okay. We're, and we're actually right next door to the establishment. Um, I actually own the two family next door to the body shop, and uh, I, you know our concerns. I think it's a real bad idea on our end, anyways. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I have no additional raised hands. Thank you. Anybody from the city councilor's office? Okay, um, may I have a motion, please? I'm gonna make a motion to defer. It sounds like uh, there hasn't been a process with the neighborhood. Um, sounds like the owner may be amenable to making some accommodations and changes, but unless that conversation happens uh, first, before it comes to us, I don't think we should act on it. So I'm making a motion to defer. I'll second that motion, Mr. Ehrlich. I think you're right. I, I, there's a lot of work if, as far as I'm concerned to be had about how to make this fit in. Um, so I, I, guess, I guess my bottom line question is, should it fit in? You know, um, you know given the testimony about um, all the, the, the impacts, uh, but, but sure, there's a motion on the, on the table that's yeah. a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any um, opposed? Motion carries for a deferral. The date, please. We're going to push it out to May 24th yeah. at 11.30. May 24th at 11.30 for everybody who um, is on this call. Thank you. Madam Chair, it's now uh, 10.37. I'm going to call the 10.30 cases for any deferrals or withdrawals. If you can give me the address first, please. This is for 10.30 only, deferrals or withdrawals. Uh, Mr. Fortune, 525 East Broadway. Thank you, Mr. Pass. Okay, Will the record so, calling people? Hold, hold on, Mr. Mr. Fortune, before we call it in the record, anybody here who is here for 1030, this is a six-member board, um, and so for approval of your project, you need five members in support. You do have the option for requesting an administrative deferral. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Lacasse. I'm sorry, Mr. Lacasse, the address was 525 East Broadway? Yes. For the record, calling VOA 1270458, 525 East Broadway. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Mark Lacasse, Lacasse Law, 75 Arlington Street in Boston, attorney for the applicant, the St. George Albanian Orthodox <clears throat> Cathedral, um, requesting a deferral to complete our process of reviewing stormwater management with our engineer and the abutters regarding <clears throat> rainwater from the roof of the cathedral, which is adjacent to the parish house, which is the subject of this proposal. Thank you. Please. May I have a motion, please? Motion, I defer. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The date, please. You'll have a date of April 26th at 1130. Thank you so much. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for 1030? 
Hearing none, I'll go back to the 930s. Calling DOA 128 3031 12 Everett Street. This erects a three unit building. The violations, Article 55, Section 9, the lot frontage is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Mark Sangiolo. I'm the architect for the project. Um, with me on line is the owner developer, Kate Earls, and also the landscape architect, uh, Susan Sangiolo. We were before the board and were denied uh, over a year ago for a six unit building. We're here now proposing three units. Um, this drawing here, uh, T1, shows the building uh, and the footprint in relation to the, uh, the site and the surrounding buildings. Although it is the cl classic uh, pork chop lot with 25 feet of frontage on every street, we do have um, 80 feet of frontage on the Gordon Street side, which is a public park. And we overlook, we're high above the uh, T, so it's not like the site is constrained around it. If you go to T2, T2 shows our design process, one through seven, where we started, uh, what we were show proposing. Us, please show us where you ended up. Sure. Uh, we ended up with number uh, seven after an extensive uh, community uh, and neighborhood review. The neighbors were uh, completely involved in the design of this project. They decided where the building would be sited, um, how many units would be, it would be what the building type would be. We had wanted to do townhouses. They wanted to do flats. We had no problem with relinquishing control of the uh, design to them as okay, long as they're so, right. so tell us then, okay, so your only violation is lot frontage because, okay, so tell us about how traffic and parking is supposed to work. Sure. So uh, as you can see on this plan, L1, this is the landscape plan. To the left uh, is Everett Street. Uh, there has a driveway that uh, goes down. It's a shared driveway between 8 Everett on the left, which is a project we did uh, uh, two years ago. It's a three-unit three, three unit building. And then as we go, uh, you can see our building that is entered um, from below. Uh, there's also a walk along the right, uh, the bottom property line that goes along the lot line and into the, um, into the building. If you go to um, um, A1, I think it'll show how the parking works a little better. It's down. Yep. Back up, back up. Uh, back up more. It's right there. Yep. This A1 color drawing. So you can see the driveway and how the parking works on the site. The parking is lower than the driveway goes down lower and the, uh, the entry is on a split level, a half level above. Um, we did try to minimize the, the garage garages there's only three three parking spaces we did try to minimize the garages by pushing the one garage back to reduce the massing so if you go down now to the next um, drawing this is the, uh, the image of what the the building looks like you can see the parking the garage the parking court the garages the entry on the half level and the kind of picturesque character that the neighbors uh, wanted to see in the building so um how are the plans mr robinson uh, plans are good. Um, I think it's a, a comprehensive proposal for, for an odd any shape quest lot. Any for questions? Sure. Any questions from the board? So your abutter at um, what is it? Fourteen has their car park tilted right towards your uh, your your walkway. Um, so that's going to be interesting to be able to keep that clean, but. That's just an observation because I was driving by the other day and noticed the site clearing and the and the, the car park. Um, is anybody here to speak in support or in opposition of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Tiffany Caballero here from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, and a butters meeting was facilitated by my office back on September 27, 2021. Um, I possess 28 letters from Director Butters in non-opposition of this project. Additionally, the JPNC Zoning Subcommittee voiced support of this proposal as well on February 2nd, 2022. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the Board's judgment. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary here, I do have a signature page of 28 in support. Thank Madam you. Chair, I do do have one raised hand, uh, Belinda. I sent a request to unmute you. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? 
hi Belinda. Maybe having some issues uh, with the audio. Um, other than that, I have no additional raised hands. Is David um, okay? David Conakin. Is he here for this project, yeah. Mr. Ambassador? Hi, David. Sorry, he's on the panelist section. Are you ready to give testimony for this proposal? Yes, my name is David Carnahan. I live at 6 Everett Street in Jamaica Plain. I'm a direct debutter to the project. I'd like the board to be aware of the memorandum of understanding that was reached between the developers and 28 abutters. Uh, it covers items that are not necessarily on the building plan or the landscape plan, but that the uh, developers have agreed to adhere to it going forward. I'd appreciate if the board could recognize the memo of understanding as part of uh, of, of of the approval process, if indeed you do approve this project this morning, and the 28 uh, names on the uh, memo of under uh, memo of, of understanding do support, uh, you know, the granting of, of the variance. Um, so the board generally does not um, um, recognize or include in their decisions any memorandum of understanding, since we are not privy to those. Um, we, we are not privy to those or part of the decision making process. So I'll just uh, put that out there. Um, any other, anybody else, Ms. Ambassador? No, ma'am. I try to go back to Belinda. Uh, it looks like there's still issues getting her on. So I have no additional issues yet. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve BPD and design review. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set. Good luck. Thank you very much. Have a nice <coughs> call in the last case for uh, for 930, yeah. calling BOA 125 0289 sorry, 116 to 126 Harvard Avenue. This is a change of art from existing retail space into a cannabis dispensary for recreational use. Violation of Article 51, Section 16. Locate. Uh, Mr. Fortune, you went dark on us. Sorry, I got muted. What did you hear? I guess I could start over. <laughs> on the last case, the 930, calling BOA 125 0289 116 to 126 Harvard Avenue. This is a change of, change of occupancy from an existing retail space into a cannabis dispensary with recreational use. The violation is Article 51, Section 16. The use and regulations, the location, the forbidden buffer zone conflict proposed within 2,640 feet of another cannabis establishment. Article 51, Section 16, the use and regulations, cannabis established recreational use is conditional. Name and address for the record, please. Eric Lawrence, 26 Woodbine Street, Roxbury, Mass, business owner. So uh, talk to us about what you're proposing. Um, you may have been on some of our other calls, so please tell us about um, how your, your um, operation is proposed to work, any parking that you're proposing, um, and how far away you are from another establishment. Tell us why um, the community needs to within the half mile. Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, and members of the board, and thank you for this opportunity to present our proposal this morning to you for an adult use dispensary located at 116 Harvard Avenue. Um, yes, to answer your question specifically, uh, we will operate um, out of 2,000 square foot street level retail space on Harvard Avenue. Um, it is a business district uh commercially zoned um, it's a cc district community commercial um it is a commercial district yes um there are no direct residential butters to us um we are an economic uh, empowerment and social equity applicant we're independent local and a minority owned business and we plan to make a positive impact to the community through several initiatives, which we will discuss uh, with you. Um, so, yes, um, the uh, buffer zone issue uh, on the map you have up, it designates and shows that 
um, our, where our location is versus the uh, the uh, location that we are within their buffer zone, Mayflower Medicinals, further down Harvard Avenue. Um, as indicated in the circles, the CVSs that are that are indicated there almost does it that we, um, basically we serve two different markets within the neighborhood. Um, as so I, I'm, I'm interested in very specifically, yes, about, I'm, I'm not interested in CVS, but about the Mayflower medicine, medicinals uh, between the two, you know, between the two. Right. Uh, yes. Okay. So we, we are 0 0.3 miles away from um, Mayflower Medicinals. Uh, when we started this process, Mayflower Medicinals was a medical only um, operator and they currently are only serving medical patients only. Um, with that, with the fact that we have a natural buffer in Com Ave and the green line, um, this, uh, between us, uh, the fact that we're commercially zoned, the fact that uh, the density within all is 50% higher than the citywide average density is. We feel that we can, um, the, the Alston area, especially on the corridor, can support two dispensaries within the location. Mayflower, Mayflower's Medicinals is right on the border of Brookline and Alston. Uh, and so we feel that we will serve a different a different customer, uh, specifically being recreational as well as the distance between us, the natural buffer, um, and so, uh, so so please tell us about your facility, your hours of operation, uh, how much of it will be just pick up, um, how you'll deal with queuing. Right. So um, our facility, our location um, is, again, it's 2,000 square feet uh, retail space level. One of the things that we're going to do with the location is we're going to add a separate entrance to the right of the building to help with customer flow. Once you enter into the building, you'll go through the required security checks, one on the outside, one on the inside with, through the state's uh, scanner, and then one at the point of sale. Immediately entering the facility, we have designated uh, about 5,000 square feet of space. If you look at the uh, diagram to the right, it's kind of like a horseshoe. Uh, one of our impacts that we're making with the community is to use this space as indoor queuing, and it will double also as a indoor gallery, a rotating gallery where we allow Alston residents to exhibit and monitor their artwork. Um, artists in Alston, uh, we've okay. done- um, so, so please tell us then, um, about deliveries, how and when will deliveries occur? Yes, um, deliveries um, and cash transfers will occur to the rear of the building. Uh, we have a uh, separate um, loading area to the rear of the building. Um, those, those deliveries will be discrete and unmarked vehicles and they will be randomized in the delivery and we will, um, you know, we'll have a, uh, on-site security, um, as well as uh, cameras throughout the facility in the interior and the exterior to, to help security with our site and with the area as in the general um, business area as well. Okay. Um, and will you be proposing to use the basement at all, or is it all on this level? Um, the basement will be used as a uh, break room uh, for our associates, we'll have two bathrooms in there, and on one side of the basement, we'll use for office space. Okay. So your vault will be on this level then? All will be on the uh, street level, yes. Okay. Um, and what are your proposed hours of operation? Um, seven days a week, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are pretty straightforward, um, no real questions. Looks like minimal exterior updates uh, as shown in the proposal. Uh, Ms. Ms. Lawrence, did you uh, tell us about how much of your business do you anticipate happening as uh, just pickups or online? Um, so online um, ordering, we will have pre-ordering and online uh, for express pickup. We anticipate maybe between 30 and 40% of that um, would be online, which will 
uh, help with the customer flow, eliminate uh, lines on the exterior of the building, and um, just kind of expedite the, expedite the process of uh, getting customers in and out. Um, we are working also with the uh, City of Boston Parking Department. We'd like to institute a 15-minute parking um, area zone within um, the, the, the business district. We feel that it will help not only with our business, but the many restaurants that um, you utilize uh, Grubhub and Uber Eats uh, that come in and out of uh, facilities only need about 15 minutes in which to do so. Our average transaction, we estimate, will be about at no more than 10 minutes for a customer to come in, purchase their product, and, and leave the building. And uh, so uh, a general a general cannabis establishment such as yours is also allowed to um, sell medical marijuana? Is, am I right about that? Um, only if you're a vertically integrated operator, and which we are not. Wait, what does that mean? Uh, meaning that we would grow our own product. You have to grow your own product in order to be a medicinal uh, operator. So we would not compete with uh, Mayflower Medicinals. Okay. Um, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes, Madam Hello. Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office deferred judgment to the board. Some background information on the community process. Uh, the applicant has met and presented to both the Brighton Alston Improvement Association and the Alston Civic Association. Uh, during those presentations, a number of members expressed um, support of the location, feeling it was appropriate being in a business district that's zoned for community commercial. Um, there should be a letter that also came in from the Alston Civic Association regarding concerns about uh, the buffer zone conflict with just a number of marijuana establishments already approved in the Alston, Civic, in the Alston area. Excuse me. Um, the mayor's office had a public meeting on December 29th in 2021. Um, so overwhelmingly, the residents that attended and the business owners that attended were in support. They liked that the applicant had done a good job reaching out to them like the commitments to equity and supporting local artists. I believe the Alston uh, Village Main Street organization has also submitted a letter of support, as he has also submitted a letter of support to another uh, rival cannabis dispensary in the area as well. Thank you. Okay, um, I would like anybody to who is anticipating giving testimony, I'd like to have Alston Brighton residents not residents from uh, other parts of the city or other cities, okay? Madam Alton, Chair, Secretary Alton here. Brighton we... residents only. Thank you. Go ahead. Madam um, Chair, Mr. Secretary, I'm sorry, just reiterating with uh, the mayor's office that we do have those letters of support. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and Madam Chair, I do have a few raised hands. Um, I'll start with Joshua Sullivan. Hello? Can you hear me? Hi, go ahead. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Yeah, this isn't Joshua Sullivan. I don't know if that where you're supposed to call. Oh. Call. Um, we can go ahead. Go on. No. Oh yeah. Uh, my name is Alexander Shames. Um, I live at 49 Cushman Road in Brighton. Um, I want to speak in strong support of um, Mass Greenwoods, 116 Harvard Ave. Um, uh, they have been really, really connected to the neighborhood. They showed up at um, a rally last week. The okay, coalition for thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Then, um, <laughs> go to the Nick next. Nick Krico, can you state your name and address for the record, please? Um, hi, my name is Nick Rico. I'm a, a Austin resident at 64 Ridgemont Street, apartment number one. I'm a founding member of uh, Artist Impact. And um, I would like to um, just say that um, I am in strong support of this establishment. I think that there are programs for uh, social equity and uh, housing assistance for their staff um, and uh, artist resources um, is unrivaled in, in the neighborhood. And thank you, um, thank you, Nick. Yeah. All right, yeah. Joshua, go ahead. Hello. Yes, my name is Joshua Sullivan. I'm from 160 Cambridge Street. I've lived in Austin all my life, um, maybe five generations, and um, I'm also disabled. Um, and that would be real nice and, uh, and awesome that um, there would be a nice dispensary local um, close to my home where I could just ride my wheelchair in. Um, and thank, thank you. you. 
All right, and then I'll go to Ron Packet. Um, send the request to unmute you. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Hi, Dwan. Hi. Hi, my name is Dwan Packnett. I live in Brighton, Fort Chiswick Road, um, number 43. And um, I am in strong support of this application and this team. I think it will be a great addition to the Austin Brighton neighborhood. Thank you. All right, Tony Desidoro, um, been sent a request to unmute you. Okay, go ahead. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Tony Desidoro representing the Austin Civic Association. Uh, Madam Chair, we've issued a statement of uh, non-opposition, uh, uh, not so much directed at the proponents, uh, but we wanted to bring to your attention the, the item that you brought up earlier. We actually have four dispensaries uh, in various stages of the uh, review approval process. Uh, 259 Cambridge Street, 116 Harvard Ave, 144 Harvard Ave, and 230 Harvard Ave. All four of them are within a mile of each other. Three of the four on Harvard Ave, of course, are within the half mile uh, buffer. So we just wanted to, uh, through the statement of non-opposition, deferring judgment to the board, we just wanted to bring to the attention of the board what is in the pipeline and what uh, conceivably could come to the uh, zoning board of appeals in the future. Tony, let me ask you, how many of those are equity applicants? See, I'm not sure, Madam Chair. Uh, the the the, 250, the 259 Cambridge, as you know, was approved both by the Cannabis Board and by the ZBA. Um, 116, of course, is here today. 144 was in front of the Cannabis Board, and they decided to defer because there was uh, some questions about the community review process, and they needed to schedule another community meeting. And then, as you know, one, uh, 230 Harvard Ave is a medical. It's the only one we have, an operating medical dispensary. They have also been approved by the Cannabis Board and the CBA for a recreational uh, license as well. So, um, again, we just wanted to bring to, to your attention the fact that there's really four proposals that we know of that are actively in pursuit of getting a license granted to them. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. And, um, Kimberly Cutter, can you state your name and address for the record, please? Hi, yes, this is Kimberly Hutter. I'm from Senator Brownsburger's office. I um, wanted to come today to offer the standard, uh, the Senator's standard response of non-opposition to this proposal um, and defer to the judgment of the board, but also state that the Senator um, does have a blanket policy of supporting applications for cannabis business um, in the area. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and Narvacito, yeah. sent a request to unmute you. Hi, thank you. My name is Narvik Uh I live at 101 Etna Street in Brighton, uh, and I just wanted to speak in support of the opening of the dispensary uh, and also the, the gallery that will be a part of it. I think it's going to be really good for the community in terms of bringing art from the residents out into the streets, so to speak. Um, Austin is a very art rich environment to be in. I'm a local artist myself and it's always nice to see, you know, initiative from business owners to kind of bring that more into the community and Thank help you. all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Madam, we keep going. There's still a couple more hands. About yeah, let's, let's get, uh, let's get four more and that's it. Okay. Yep. Stephen Donahue, go ahead. Hi, this is Pastor Steve Donahue at 51 Walnut Street. I wanted to let you know I am in complete opposition to this proposal. I'm sorry, Walnut Street, where? 51 Walnut Street. Where? In Neponset. It's right behind the dispensary. Okay. So, so this is in Alston. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought this okay. was the dispensary. No, no, no. Okay. This is in Alston. Okay. Um, young Juice. One second. Okay, yep. Can you state your full name and address for the record, please? Hi, Justin Diaz from 163 Strathmore Road, Brighton. And I am in strong 
support of this dispensary opening along with the gallery, which I think will enhance the communi community of artists in the area. And yeah, I support this. Thank you. Okay. Thank and you. then last one, Hillary. Thank you. My name is Hillary Marcotte. Uh, I'm a resident of Austin at 235 Harvard Avenue. I live a five minute walk from the proposed location. Um, I want to express strong support for Mass Greenwoods. Um, I, I would love to be able to support a local minority owned business in my neighborhood. Um, I support them setting up expungement clinics and creating a space for local artists. It's walkable, it's right off the B line, a major bus route. Thank so you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so um, um, we have, a, um, you know, the perennial issue, or maybe it's the weekly issue. Um, to two um, operators within proximity of each other. And um, Tony is right. We did um, approve 230 as a switch from purely medical when they started off to a general. Um, and so um, given that this is an equity um, applicant, I don't know if that changes the the, the decision because, um, you know, this is um, an intense number of uh, applications for such a small area. So given that information that we've heard and the high level of support, may I have a motion, please? Before we do entertain a motion, can I just ask a question? If we're dealing with this buffer zone issue and making exceptions, uh, presumably the Cannabis Board has weighed in on this. Um, do we know what their rationale was in favor? Yes, we, and, and that's what we would like to have um, submitted to us as part of the package, just like the BPDA provides their, um, their advisory opinions to this board. We would like to hear from the uh, Cannabis Commission likewise. Well, um, Tom, I believe the Cannabis Commission submitted its letter into the board file on this one. So Mr. Fortune, can you just summarize? It's what just a germane letter, but I can read it out. If you, I can try to no, figure just, it out. Just, just the, the core is the core, the core thing in there about it, it the should, it, should be a matter, it should be a matter of public record as opposed to just in our file. Okay, so Mr. Fortune. Can yeah, you it's pretty extensive, Madam Chair. Okay, so the bottom line is they're in support of this. That's correct. Okay, so the the issue that's before us is that you know you know we need to figure out, and since this this is a forbidden use, is this a use that would is this a forbidden use or a conditional use? In this location, it is a forbidden use for some strange reason, because I thought in all commercial districts they were um, they were conditional uses. They are, except if you're within the buffer zone, then it's forbidden. Oh, that's that is true because the oh, the okay. main use is conditional. That's right. Okay. Um, so so this is a conditional use, forbidden because it's within the um, within the half a mile. So um, so given that information, may I have a motion, please? I, I, I'll make a motion to approve um, with BPDA design review um, and, and similar. I, I, the, the windows, trying to keep them o open and transparent as possible. I know there's the regulations they have to follow, but design review for that and signage. And this applicant only? And, yep, and this applicant only. Is there a second? I'll second that, Madam Chair, Secretary. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Good luck. <clears throat> Madam Chair, I'm going to start the 10:30. Do you want to take a couple of minutes break, or do we want yes, to? Yes, it's, it's now 11:08. Let's take a break until 11:15. Okay. Thank you. The meeting is adjourned until then.
Meeting is being recorded. Let us resume the meeting for March 22nd for the Zoning Board of Appeal. Um, just before we kick off, let me remind everybody that this is a six member board and that um, you need five approvals, uh, uh, five um, positive votes for your project to be approved. You are thus, um, and, you know, um, you you do, you do thus have the option to require to request an administrative deferral. Sorry about all that stumbling, but go ahead, Mr. Fortune. Thank you, Madam Chair. I already called it once, but I'll call it again for any of the 1030 cases. If there are any deferrals or withdrawals, you give me the address first, please. Hearing none, Madam Chair, I'll call the first case for 1030, calling DOA 125 2505 166 to 168 Salem Street. This is a change of art from an eight unit residential one store to a nine unit residential dwelling and extend living space into the basement and construct new rear decks. For violations, Article 54, Section 10, the floor day ratio is excessive. Article 54, Section 21, our street parking is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Greg McCarthy for 166 Salem. So please tell us what's being proposed. Sure. Uh, so we have a uh, existing five-story, uh, nine-unit building, which we are proposing to change from eight units and a club. Uh, the ground floor was a club that hasn't been used in, in some time. Um, so we're proposing to change it from eight, eight units in a club to nine residential. We're also, um, that, that's where our violation comes for, from for off-street parking. We don't have a uh, parking spot to, to provide for the additional residential unit. So first, uh, tell us, uh, has this um, address been before this board before for the residential use? Uh, no. Okay. No. So tell us about that first floor unit um, sure. and tell us how, what the proposed square footage is. And just so that you know, this board is not overly thrilled about residential use in the basement. So talk us through that, please. Sure, yeah, so we have, uh, the, the way the building was, was stacked previously is two units per floor. Uh, so we, we uh, when we extended the living space to the basement, we made two duplexes. Uh, originally, we were going to have the bedrooms down here in the basement, uh, but you know there wasn't it wasn't the best space for them. Uh, so we ended up just doing all living space down there. There's a uh, you know pretty decent ceiling height. And we have a good amount so of windows. Tell us, down tell there. us very specifically. Um, what is the flow to ceiling height in the basement? What so we'll is the have, so hold on, hold on. What is the proposed square feet for each of those uh, each of those two units? And what two. is their second means of egress? And finally, are the uh, meters um, accessible independently from the units? Yes, they are. So the the the. The units are about 900 square feet, these duplexes here. Um, there are, the building's fully sprinkled. Uh, so for these first floor units, um, we didn't have the same problem as we had for the, for the fifth floor unit, we needed a second means of egress, which is why we have a, a staircase coming all the way back down. For these, we do have window wells in them, but those are just uh, kind of additional egresses for them. Um, and then all the other... Um, Tell us about the floor to ceiling height in the basement. Sure, so the floor to ceiling height will be eight feet where it's complete. Uh, seven, seven foot 11. Okay, how are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, <clears throat> plans are, are Fine. Is there a is there a plot plan or a survey? I, I just don't know what the um, rear yard encroachment of the additional decks is. And um, just for the board, the um, the living space appears to be in the basement is wholly below grade. I think there are some looks to be some small windows and some area wells in the back. But 
There is no bedroom called out. It's called out as an office in the basement. So, so it's I don't a, see, I don't so see there's- Sorry, Mr. Robinson, it's entirely below grade? Yes. As you okay. can see in this plan, uh, this elevation on the current screen, the right-hand side shows the dashing of the new basement level, which is minus nine foot four, it says, which I assume the reason it's a eight foot ceiling is because it's there's structure there, of course. So um, there are small windows on the left-hand side, as you can see in the front below, that appear to be the only actual windows into the basement um, besides the rear area wells. Okay. Um, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Sarah Tomiko with Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. They had complete their community process. Um, however, abutters did voice concerns about the rear decks because they believed it would bring more noise and disturbance to the neighborhood. Although there were two letters of support from North End Waterfront Residents Association and the North End Waterfront Neighborhood Council. Our office would like to defer to the board's judgment at this time. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Michael Benetti from the office, <clears throat> sorry, from the office of Boston City Council, Olivia Edwards. The council would like to ask for deferral for continued conversations with neighbors and abutters, um, specifically regarding the rear decks. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we have one support letter. Okay. And Madam Chair, I do have one raised hand. Bob, I sent a request to unmute you. You're looking to give testimony for this case. If not, um, I have no additional raised hands. I'm not sure. Bob is. Hi, Bob, okay. can you hear it? Yeah. It's okay. Um, may I have a motion, please? Um. Uh, I would, I would, I would entertain a motion or make a motion to defer as well, without having the a, a plot plan. I just don't understand how close the decks are to the rear. It's fairly tight in the rear. Um, and, I'll, and I'll, is there a second? I'll second that. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I would also encourage the applicant to think about whether it's really worth going into the basement for those new plexes and think about what it would look like to actually have that as livable space. Okay, in the next case, please. We have a date of April 26 at 11.30. Okay, see you then. Calling the next case, calling VOA 128 5023 148 Worcester Street. This is installed a new roof deck. The violation of Article 56, Section 64.34, Access by a head house, Article 56, Section 64-34, restricted roof district, percentage of the roof coverings exceeded ex excess of height. Name and address for the record, please. Hi, is David on? Can you raise your hand? Who well, is representing David McGrath? One second, I just see the hand raised. Um, is it Mar Marco? Are you here to representing the 148 Worcester? So, um, my lawyer, actually, Adam Boronsky, should be online. Uh, Adam Boronsky? In the case, of, I mean, I, if he's not there, I can present it. Um, hi, good morning. Can you hear me? Oh, here he is. Yes. Okay. Oh, hi. Sorry about that. Hey, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Adam Barnowski, 255 State Street, Boston. With me is uh, Marco Petrillo, the property owner, and uh, the architect, Eduardo Serrate, might be joining us, although he did have a conflict around 11 o'clock. Uh, the property is located within the South End Neighborhood District, the MFR and Zoning Subdistrict. This is an application for an installation of a roof deck. Uh, the property is located southeast of Columbus Avenue amidst, amidst a row of townhouses, both adjacent to and across the street from the subject property. Unit 5 is located on the fifth floor with exclusive roof rights. As the plans show, the access to the roof deck as proposed is through an existing headhouse at the rear of the property, access through a rear stairway. This is not a common roof with the de uh, deck being exclusive to Unit 5. 
The design is consistent with but, other so townhomes let, on Worcester so let Street. Let me ask you, can oh. I ask you, is this visible from the street? No. No, okay. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are good, uh, no questions. Any questions from the board? Uh, just what is the size of the existing house? I'm sorry, what was the question? What is the size of the existing head house? Uh, the, the width is, uh, is seven foot two inches. It's on, you can see, you can see it on, uh, on A2 of the construction plans. So can you just verbally put it on the record? Uh, yes, yeah, seven feet two inches. By what? Is it seven foot two inches square? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the plan here. And is Eduardo on the line? At this point, he might be able to answer that quickly. Eduardo? Okay, I, 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 all I really wanted to know is whether this is basically a head house that would just for the access of stairs or whether it's one of those expanded head houses, but it looks to be a, on, it, on the small It's side. a fairly small head house, Mr. Ehrlich. Right. I think it's, it, it's not dimensioned in plan. It, it's one direction, but it looks like about seven by seven-ish. Okay. Um, but it, it and it's it's at the back, so the roof slopes right. down. So it's fairly yep. minimal. Yep. Got it. Okay. Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Hi. Oh, yes. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Kim Crusilli with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office held an abutters meeting in February of 2022, um, where support was shown by the abutters. They also received a letter of support from the Claremont Neighborhood Association. At this time, our office would like to defer to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary, we have that letter from the Claremont. And hey, Madam Chair, I do have one raised hand. Kalamu, are you going to give testimony here? I sent a request to unmute you. I'm not sure if there's issues on your side. Um, oh, okay. Uh, there, you uh, go. Right. there you go. Can you state your name and address for the record? Yes, I'm uh, Kalamu Kieta from District 7 City Council Tanya Anderson's office. We just want to um, go on record in support of this project. Thank you. All right, and I have no additional raised hands at the moment. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. Following the next case, calling VOA 123 9778 50 Clap Street. The applicant uh, NSADO hold. Ma'am, I'll, I'll be recusing myself from this case. This is Eric. Okay. Um, uh, Chair, um, this is the uh, attorney. I know the secretary was about to introduce uh, the case. Uh, I like our case, however, going to five members, Madam Chair. Okay, I, hold on, hold on. Let's no. um, have it in, read into the record, just at least the, the number and the address, and then we'll yep. take it from there. Thank you. I've already done that, but I'll do it again. Kalen yeah. Case, BOA 123 9778 Clap Street. Name and address for the record, please. Attorney Mike Ross from Prince Lobel, one international place. Yeah, Madam Chair, like I said, I, I, we like hold our on. case, but. Okay, hold on. Let me have a motion for deferral. Motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. This is because there's a five member board. Um, and so this is an administrative deferral. Uh, may we have a date, please? We can do April 26th. April 26th works, uh, Mr. Secretary. Uh, hold on, Mr. Ross. I'm being told that there's going to be another member that's not going to be there as well. Maybe it'll look like a report, but it's not guaranteed. The next day, where we don't have any absences, is May 24th. Uh, we can do May 24th at 1130. Um, did you hear that, Mr. Ross? Yeah, sorry. Um, uh, yeah, let, let's do okay. that, please, okay. uh, Madam Chair, Mr. Secretary. Thank you. Well, May 24th at 1130. Okay, see you then. Thank, Thank you. you. Following the next case, <coughs> calling DOA 1270494 460 East 7th Street. This is the building roof deck. 
the building extend the existing spiral staircase to access new roof deck in the rear of the building. The violations, Article 68, Section 29, roof structure restriction, access by a spiral stair. Name and address for the record, please. Oh, one second, they are on. Um, they're in the Jerry, are you here to speak on behalf of this project? I just sent a request to unmute you. Yes, I am. Sorry, I think I was muted. No worries. Go ahead. Hi, uh, my name is Gerald Adler. I'm the owner at 460 East 7th Street. Um, address is 28 Monument Street, Charlestown. Ms. Adler, could you um, uh, make sure we can see you? We strongly encourage that. Uh, so please go, please go ahead and describe your project. How do I put the, uh, how do I activate the camera? <clears throat> there should be a tab that says start video, the bottom left hand side. Afraid I've not seen that, ma'am. Okay, okay, just go ahead then. I, I apologize for that. Um, in any event, um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Thank you for the opportunity to present today and, and share our proposal for 460 East 7th Street. We are requesting to add a private deck for the third floor unit to be located on the roof. Uh, at the moment, all the tenants continue to work from home and lack dedicated outdoor space. Um, and knowing the challenges of that situation, we're looking to improve the living condition and, um, and add a deck which is detailed on, I believe, the next page of the plans that you are scrolling through at the moment. So this would not, this would be open to all residents then, not just to that top unit? Um, not quite, ma'am. The, uh, the intent would be that this deck would be for the exclusive use of the third floor residents. Okay, okay third floor, okay. Okay, um, and how is it accessed? It's to the spiral stairs, right? Exactly right. There is an existing spiral staircase in the rear. This is the second mode of egress for the third floor. And the, the proposal is to simply extend that existing spiral staircase up to the roof level so that um, that becomes the, the mode of access to the deck. Um, let's see. And is there a possibility to access that roof deck uh, via, the, via a hatch? Uh, there actually is a hatch, yes. Um, we did not think that that was, um, that is certainly an option that we, we could we could explore. Um, we thought that it would likely be easier to um, access it via the existing spiral stair by simply extending it. But um, there is a hatch um, and that putting a, um, putting access through that hatch is, is definitely something that could be done. Absolutely. Okay. Um, when was this building constructed? Um, it is it quite old. I don't have the exact date. Okay, it's not roughly in the recent past. Okay. No, no, it's roughly 1900. Okay. Um, is, um, how are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are pretty straightforward. It, the, it looks like the existing spiral is there up to three, and then they're just proposing to extend it up and then build a new It is held back from all sides um, shouldn't be visible for any of any the streets. No questions. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Hi, Madam Chair, members of the board, Haley Dillon, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At the abutters meeting, um, we did hear a lot of opposition from longstanding owners um, and generational Southie residents. Um, and we did hear a few support from a couple renters down the street. Um, and any of the support or opposition letters were sent to the zoning board, but we would like to defer to the board. Thank you. Haley, did I understand that we are, I'm not gonna see you much more at this Board of Appeal in this capacity? <laughs> yes, unfortunately, <Right>. bummer. <laughs> I'm sorry about that because you just have a great um, history with the community and put things in context, so good luck. Oh, thank you, you're the best. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we have one letter. Um, in opposition. Okay. And Madam Chair, do we have two raised hands? I'll start with Paul. Paul, I sent a request to unmute you. Sorry, Madam Chair, I would like to okay. suggest. Sorry, go ahead. My apologies. <laughs> no problem. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President's Flink's office. Councilor would like to 
in opposition based on feedback from our partners, neighbors, and the Gate of Heaven Neighborhood Association, who all expressed significant concerns of um, absent landlords and noise disruption, loud parties at all hours, trash removal, and other quality of life issues. These concerns have been significant quality of life issues in the South Boston community for years and have unfortunately been exacerbated to a much higher degree over the last couple of years during the pandemic. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan for City Council at large, Michael Flaherty. Council like to go on record in opposition. Uh, he'd also like to suggest that the board put a moratorium on roof deck approvals until the community, working with the appropriate state department, C6 and ISD, get the existing roof deck parties and safety issues under control. Council would like to note that there were several incidents in the neighborhood this past weekend and an instance where one person actually fell off a roof deck. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Um, Kaylee, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address on the record, please? Hi, Kay. Okay. All right. Uh, Paul McDonough, go ahead. Are you upset? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes. My name is Paul McDonough. I live at 4567 Street. I'm in opposition to this roof deck. Hi. Can you hear me? <clears throat> oh, one minute. Go ahead. Go ahead, yes. Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. There's already two large decks on the back of that house, and there's nothing but parties and noise out there all the time. One of the decks has an illegal grill on there that's covered by a roof. But there's been nothing but trouble with this landlord since he's been here. He's been ticketed by the city. He doesn't the only house in the block that doesn't shovel the sidewalks. Everything else, you know, just <clears throat> nothing but problems here. We don't need, Thank you. need more. Thank you. All right, Kaylee, go ahead. Hi, Kaylee. Sullivan, are you, are you looking to give testimony here? Okay, um, Rich, Richie? Hi, um, I would like to voice my opposition. I grew up on this street and it used to be a community and it has been destroyed by absentee landlords and nonstop partying, oh, which- Hold on, hold on, Ms. McDonough. Can you put your name and address on the record, please? Uh, my name is Bridie McDonough. I live at 456 East 7th Street, two doors okay. up. So we just heard from uh, somebody in your household, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. May, uh, is there other raised hands? No, no, ma'am. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion for denial. Is there a Go second? Ahead. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Mr. Adler, it sounds like there's a little bit of work you need to do to be a good neighbor. Um, so please uh, see what you can do with, uh, with your abutters, okay? Thank you. Madam Chair, it's now 1139. I'm going to call the 1130 cases. There are any deferrals and withdrawals, and then I'll also do the uh, subcommittee. So Excellent. if anybody has a case for 1130 that is deferring or withdrawing, if you can give me the address, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. 221 East Eagle Street, Mr. Secretary, it's Attorney Lenz. Thank you, Mr. Lenz. For the, so the record, the address agree. again? 221 East Eagle. Thank you. Uh, case BOA 1256992, 221 East Eagle Street. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good morning, Mr. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the Board, Richard Lenz, uh, 245 Summer Street, East Boston. On behalf of the petitioner, uh, Madam Chair, I believe uh, you only have a six-member board. There will be one recusal, and therefore we would only have a five-member board for the hearing, and therefore requesting administrative deferral. And uh, who is the recusal? Is that you, Joe? Okay, got it. Um, may I have a motion, please? Motion for deferral. Is there I'll a second, Chair. All, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The date, please. You'll have a date of April 26th at 11.30. Thank you. Actually, Mr. Secretary, possible to get a further date out? I'm actually away that day. Yeah, we can give you in May. Uh, hold on two seconds. Yeah, let's do May 24th at 11.30. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for 11.30? Yes, request for deferral. Elizabeth Fernandez, 73 Stanwood Street. Address, please, first. 73 Stanwood Street. For the record, calling VOA 1224 197, 73 Stanwood Street. Name and address for the record, please. Elizabeth Fernandez, 73 Stanwood Street. And is there a reason that you're requesting another deferral? Uh, to give 
the plans examiner adequate amount of notification to review the modifications to the plan. Thank you. May I have a motion, please? Motion for motion. Second. Is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The date, please. We'll have a date of April 26th at 1130. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for 1130? Hearing none, I'm going to call the subcommittee, which met on Thursday, March 17th, 2022 at 1010 Mass Ave, fifth floor. Along the first case, case BOA 1241879615 East 3rd Street was an existing two family new regress stairs in the rear of the building. It was approved. Case BOA 1289454 Cherokee Street was deferred to the subcommittee for 414, 2022 at 5 p.m. Case BOA 1277696 41 Cornwall Street constructed new roof dorm and extend living space to the attic and existing two film. It was approved. Case BOA 1281499 Port Norfolk Street was a gut interior of a home and reinforced structure. Raised the second floor to meet code. It was approved with BPDA for dormer and roof height. Case BOA 1277213 43 Pier Street was deferred to the subcommittee on 519 2022 at 5 p.m. Case BOA 1290443 20 Orchard Street was to build a new build a dormer to create a new master bathroom. It was approved with BPDA for dormer. <coughs> Case BOA 1277380 11 Danville Street was a construct a one story addition to the rear of an existing single family detached dwelling. It was approved. Case BOA 1280083 Gertrude Road was a renovation and addition of unit two, an existing two family condo. It was approved. Case BOA 1283696 1230 Soldiers Field Road to build a fitness center. It was approved. And on the rediscussion, it was case BOA 1194620, 33 Bartlett Street. It was a renovation of the existing third floor attic. Renovated space will consist of a master bedroom along with the bath and guest room. It was approved with BPDA and attention to the raising of the roof. That concludes the subcommittee's report for March 17th, 2022. It was March 7th. So may I have a motion, please? Uh, motion to accept the recommendations of the subcommittee. Is there a second? I'll second. second her. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Calling the next case for the 1030s, calling BOA 129 6104 135 William T. Morrissey Boulevard. This is a change of art to include accessory keeping of laboratory animals. The violations Article 65, Section 15, the accessory keeping of laboratory animals is forbidden. Name and address for the record, please. Is the applicant here? Don't see it. Oh, there, there is a race name that just came up. No. Is it Matthew Fitzgerald? Okay, go ahead, Matthew. I sent the request to unmute you. Go ahead. Matthew. My apologies, Madam Chair, members of the board, Matt Fitzgerald, uh, Sullivan Worcester, um, one post office square in Boston on behalf of the petitioner, BCP, B Property LLC. Um, we are here today, quite simply, seeking approval to include one accessory use, the accessory keeping of laboratory animals, uh, to the list of approved uses at the site. This is the former Boston Globe headquarters site at 135 Morrissey Boulevard. Brief, very briefly, by way of background, in uh, July of 2018, um, the, uh, the petitioner's predecessor in interest appeared before this board seeking approval to change the use and occupancy from primarily newspaper publishing use uh, to uh, a list of, of several new uses, um, particularly research and development and laboratory use. Um, what they did not do at that time, however, was also request the accessory keeping of laboratory animals use, um, or otherwise known as vivarium use, uh, which, which is a, a critical, and for many lab tenants, an absolutely necessary use, uh, incidental to the lab and research and development use. 
So um, hold on, hold on, uh, Mr. Fitzgerald. It's good to see that you've landed, you've landed um, in the private sector. It's good to see you as well, Madam Chair. Okay, so let's just get it clear. So you're looking for accessory use for the entire building, which is less Correct. than twenty-five percent, or is it for very something very specific? So the the entire building was approved without restrictions. The entire building was was approved for research and development and laboratory use. Yes, so, remember that. Yeah. So this this accessory use will be uh, incidental to not necessarily all of the tenants, but to the tenants who do um, animal testing. So, um, you know, being as there is no restriction as to the the research and development use. This use is going to be accessory to, um, you know, wherever the research and development use that conducts animal testing. Okay, so just just out of curiosity, how is the development and the rental of the space going? Um, the, I believe construction has been completed. Um, I there, I have some some um, members of the petitioners team on the call. I believe Alan Coder or. Matthew Stiegel, if we can elevate them to panelists, they might be able to uh, elaborate as to the tenant, um, you know, the, the tenant marketing and so forth. Um, so, so Jessica, if that if that's possible, well, uh, Matthew Stiegel. Right? You said Matt Stiegel and who else? Stiegel or Alan in Alan Coder, yes. I think there are already. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Matt has his hand raised. Okay, go ahead, from Matt Stiegel and Alan. And then, uh, Matt, you can unmute yourself, panelist. Colder. All right, they're all set. Okay, please, if somebody could just give us an update. Yes, yeah, so well, this is Matt Stagel. Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, so, uh, you know, redevelopment of the property to a creative office has been completed. We're in process of converting uh, the property for R&D use. Uh, we are in discussions with, um, you know, one potential tenant working to finalize a lease for roughly 40% of the building uh, for those R&D uses. And we have signed one existing lease, um, which is not a laboratory use with noble uh, apparel, docked by 100,000 square feet. So 100,000 plus 40 percent R&D, because we're seeing a lot of R&D, so that's why we were uh, just curious to know how, how it was leasing up. But that's good to know. Okay, thank you. Um, how are the plans, um, Mr. Uh, Rob? Plans are fine. Uh, no questions um, in terms it, of the proposal. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Uh, yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, George Quinn with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The proposal received near unanimous support from the Columbia Seven Hill Civic Association. At this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McEachern, City Council, and Frank Baker's office would like to go on record and support. And Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. Anyone else is here? Um, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. I'm going to call the next four cases. Calling VOA 1295864 6R Rear Erickson Street. There are three companion cases VOA 1295771. 8R Rear Erickson Street, case BOA 1295867, 18R Rear Erickson Street, and BOA 1295870, 20R Erickson Street. So, Madam Chair, Chair I, this is Eric. I'll be recusing myself from this case. I was, as well. I was just going to ask that. Who is the applicant for this case? Is there a representative online? Yes, uh, Jared Eigerman for Ruben Junius and Rose. I'm here with Quinlan Locke from the developer, Rise Together, and uh, Kevin Diebler, the architect. Okay, so let me just tell you that with the recusal, we have a five member board. You will need every one of us to be in support of this proposal. You may thus request an administrative uh, deferral uh, if you so desire. It's your decision, so please let us know what your intention is. 
Madam Chair, we're ready to proceed. Okay. Uh, I was just trying to save Mr. Fortune some breath, so go ahead. That's okay. Um, I can't remember if I said the last one. Did I say the last one, 20? Yes, you did. Okay, great. All right, so I'm going to go to 6. This is for 6 Rear Erickson Street. This is erect a new mixed use four and five story structure at 6R Erickson on lot one. Structure contains a parking podium with two building volumes above one containing three floors of office and the other four stories of multifamily dwelling units. A landscape deck occupies a portion of level two. The violations article 25, section five, the flood hazard district, article 65, section 18. This is use of, use of waterfront service district Article 65, Section 19, the proposed FAR is excessive. Article 65, Section 19, the proposed building height is, and feet is excessive. Article 65, Section 19, the maximum residential percentage of GFA is excessive. Article 65, Section 19, the proposed front yard is insufficient. Article 65, Section 19, the proposed side yard is insufficient. And Article 65, Section 41, the proposed off street parking is insufficient. This is for 8R Erickson Street. Erect a new one story boat storage and maintenance building with address at 8R Erickson and a new marina on lot three. The marina consists of both land and waterside improvement, pairs, ramps, boat slips, as well as accessory office, lounge, and restroom space. The violations Article 25, Section 5, this is the Flood Hazard District. Article 65, Section 19, proposed building height is excessive in feet. This is for 18R, Erickson. Erect a new five-story structure at 18R, Erickson on a portion of lot two. 18R, Erickson is now is a new mixed-use five-story structure with lobby and local service retail on the ground level and multifamily dwelling units on the upper levels. Lot two also contains a structure also known as 20R, Erickson. Violations Article 25, Section 5, Flood Hazard District, Article 65, Section 18, Use of the Waterfront District, Article 65, Section 19, 18R and 20R combined on the same lot exceed both maximum res residential percentage, GFA, and maximum residential lot coverage. Article 65, Section 19, the proposed flood air ratio is excessive. Article 65, Section 19, the proposed building height is excessive in feet. Article 65, Section 19, the proposed front yard is insufficient. Article 65, Section 41, the proposed off street parking is insufficient. And Article 65, Section 42.13, two or more lots on, on the same lot. This is for 20R. Uh, Madam Chair, this is pretty much the same one violation that's different, but I, I'm going to call it into the record just for uh, save, make, save somebody to say something. So, erect a new five story structure at 20R Erickson on a portion of lot two. <laughs> 20R Erickson is a new mixed-use five-story structure with lobby and parking on the ground level and multifamily dwelling units on the upper levels. Lot 2 also contains a structure also known as 18R Erickson. The violations Article 25, Section 5, Flood Hazard District. Article 65, Section 18, the Waterfront Service District Use. Article 65, Section 19, the flood area ratio is excessive. Article 65, Section 19, proposed building height is excessive. Article 65, Section 19, the 18R and 20R combined on the same lot both exceed the residential percentage. Article 65, Section 41, proposed off street parking is insufficient, and two or more, Article 65, Section 42.13, two or more dwellings on the same lot. Name and address for the record, please. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Jay Eigerman, Ruben Junius and Rose, an office at 112 Water Street. This is a complex project, so we have a few slides to orient you. Uh, if we go to the next slide, please. Uh, on this graphic, uh, the site is shown in light yellow. It's at the end of the Port Norfolk Peninsula in Dorchester. Um, on the graphic, north is actually to the right. You'll see the Southeast Expressway at the top and the Neponset River uh, towards the bottom. The Port Norfolk existing neighborhood is a one family neighborhood. You can see that to the left of the site. And the Venezia restaurant parking lot is right next door, just below. Next slide, please. Originally, this peninsula was built out for industry. There are old brick buildings on Erickson Street. You'll notice with our addresses, we're at the rear, so we don't actually have frontage on Erickson Street. It's a large piece of land, about three and a half acres. 
The buildings you see are metal uh, boat sheds. Uh, there's also a 75 slip marina you can see in the lower left. Uh, that was set up in the 1970s. Next slide, please. Here's the proposed site plan. Uh, you can see on the left, uh, there are three proposed lots. There are four applications because there's one for each building. So uh, there will be uh, uh, about a one and a half acres of usable open space open to the public on the land side. Uh, starting at the southwest, that's what we call lot one. There's a single building. Uh, that's going to be a mix of apartments and offices and a shared parking garage. Then going counterclockwise, lot two has two oh. buildings proposed. Okay, so please um, tell us on lot one, um, give us the details while we are at it on um, the, the, the uses there, um, how you're meeting base flood elevation, um, and if there's anything related to Chapter 91 that we should know about. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Um, we are complying with the new Article 25A coastal uh, resilience, so the building will be raised and the architect will give you the exact figures. The square footage is, this will be a, about a 96,000 square foot building including 36,000 of general and professional office. But of that 36,000, over 11,000 is a community room available to the public. Uh, the sponsor actually would be occupying uh, the rest of the office space. The residential is about 33,000 square feet, total of 32 units in this building. And the shared parking garage has 100 spaces. Uh, okay, here's so a let's, render. So, so please tell us about the breakdown on those residential units, ones, twos, average square footage? Yes, um, overall, uh, we have that in a slide, but I'll, I'll state it to you. It's slide 12 if you need it. 120 dwelling units overall, there are gonna be 20 studios, 59 one bedrooms, and 41 two bedrooms. Uh, the average size, mean average, 494 for the studios, 671, uh, for the one bedrooms, I, I think it's the next slide, um, and 953 for the two bedrooms. I don't have to have the breakdown by building, but again, overall, it's 120 units. Okay, so so just for so this is just for lot one. Yes, yeah, so, uh, Madam Chair, thank you. The the breakdown for building A and the residential units is eight studios, um, 11 one bedrooms. Sorry, eight studios, eight studios. Um, eight, yep, eight 11. studios. 11 um, one bedrooms 11 one bedrooms and 13 two bedrooms for a total of 32 units that's the first lot madam chair to the to the left okay and how will parking be accommodated there's shared it, parking for this uh shared parking for the site most of it is in a 100 car garage in the first lot that we were just talking about but there are also 15 more spaces in a shared parking garage on lot two okay okay so thank you so this is lot one and lot one does not include the boathouse right correct that's lot three madam chair okay, at the so top right corner sure let's go to lot two then okay uh let me get the number well, to uh previous slides uh show the lots yeah it's, uh for a breakdown of the units on on lot two madam chair um Building B, which is the um, uh, the first residential unit closest to Erickson Street, we have eight studios, 28 one bedrooms, and 12 two bedrooms for a total of 48 units. And Building C, which is the one closest to the water, uh, we have 20 studios, 16 one bedrooms, and four two bedrooms for a total of 40 units. Okay, and will there be offices on this lot, lot two? Or is it purely no, residential? Uh, there will be ground floor retail, 3,600 square feet, but no office. Okay. Okay. Uh, to continue, uh, the zoning uh, is waterfront service. Uh, this was the result in 1989 of a community planning process. So there needs to be zoning relief uh, in order to allow, by conditional use, 
the non-boating uh, uses, so the office use and the uh, residential. Uh, there's also a cap on the amount of residential space under this old zoning, 25%, so we've requested variances from that. There are height variances sought. The basic height limit is 35 feet from the I'm zoning. Sorry, did, you, did you go to through lot three? Uh, uh, no, uh, no ma'am, we go to lot three now. Yep. So to summarize lot three, lot three is the boat, uh, the boathouse. It's purely boathouse use, uh, shown at, um, doesn't really matter which graphic you use, but it's the largest building at lot three at the northwesterly corner of the site. It's over an acre lot. It's a 22,300 square foot building, the boathouse, and it rises to 49 feet above grade. Okay, and is this what you're saying is your open space when you talk about the one and a half acres? Uh, if we could go back to the presentation, I'm sorry, perhaps uh, slide six. <clears throat> the open space is spread out across the site. Most of it is on the waterfront uh, directly. Um, so uh, and that also, the part of the site is subject to chapter 91, the northwesterly corner, but actually the southerly part of the site is not subject to chapter 91, but the open space covers both. And perhaps I should turn yeah. it over, I should turn over to Kevin to show you the sure. uh, Madam Chair, Mr. Secretary, uh, members of the board, I'm Kevin Diebler, Rudy Architects, uh, as well, I reside in Dorchester. Um, specifically, Article 25 and 25A, um, deal with uh, resiliency and open space, which compound the conditions uh, leading to our height and density. This is a view um, that shows the improvements we would make to the public way off of Erickson Street. Um, we believe it is also our, our duty to make sure that the open space that's uh, required at the water's edge is uh, accessible and the public understands how to use this space. Um, you can keep going through the, the slides the next slide shows exactly what um, we're uh, talking about in this rendering, the type of open space that uh, the public is looking for. Um, the open space needs to be accessible, um, free to use, and uh, create uh, safety. Uh, yeah, yeah, so we understand Harbor Walk, we understand all this. What, what, what I've heard criticism about is that some of these um, projects that are on the waterfront um, use the requirement, uh, the basic requirement of, um, of, of Harbor Walk and other Chapter 91 requirements as their open space, uh, as, you know, predominantly to meet their open space requirement. And I think my question to you is, you know, what is there in addition that will bring, make this community, this proposed community more robust? Uh, to make this community more robust um, is the sort of reuse of this particular piece of property. Um, this has been an important part of Dorchester's history. Its connection to the water, which has really been closed off for uh, the greater, for its, its existence. It's been a private industrial use or a private marina. Um, and, and okay. Got it, got it. Yes. And uh, will the buildings be any level of lead or how yes, will they these be? Are, uh, we have uh, decided to use the passive house system. So this would be um, uh, all the residential buildings themselves will be passive house certified as well. We'll be looking at the boathouse and office buildings to uh, test the passive house system on those types of uses, uh, which have never been done before. Uh, but we are looking at uh, reducing the energy use for all of these buildings um, in this process. So a couple of other questions. Um, so you need relief on this office and residential requirement of 25% in the, um, the WS zoning district. Um, can you tell us what you're at uh, in your proposal? Uh, yes, at lot one, there will be 38% uh, residential, exceeding the 25% cap. At lot two, across the two buildings, it's much higher. The residential would be 90% of the gross floor area, rather than the 25%. Okay, and, and of then course, there's, there's no residential at lot three. Okay, so I guess uh, cumulative, and, and is there a reason why you're keeping the lots separately? 
Uh, yes, actually, right now, it's pretty chaotic. There are seven lots, according to city records. So this is actually a simplification. And uh, it, it allows uh, the project to be developed in phases. But of course, everything is shared across the three lots. I guess my question then, it, the reason I was asking is, is there a proposal down the future to combine lots? Because I was just trying to figure out then what your average would be uh, above that 25%. It looks like it would be about 50, maybe 60%. I can, I can check that number quickly. Um, the overall square footage of the project growth floor area is about 203,000 square feet, and multifamily is 109. So it's slightly over 50%, you're correct. Okay. Okay, so 50% residential, okay. Um, okay. Um, uh, Ma Madam Chair, apologies for interrupting. Uh, I did want to correct the building C uh, breakdown, as, uh, as I think I might have given you uh, incorrect numbers there. Okay. So okay. for for, stu for studios, it's four units. For one bedrooms, it's twenty units, and for two bedrooms, it's sixteen units. Okay. For a total of forty units. Okay, forty. Apologies. Okay, so forty, not forty-four. No, no, I Correct, think forty. Yep. So there should be one hundred and twenty units total across all three residential buildings. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me just see what else. Um, so how will you be meeting um, Chapter 91 guidelines about water dependent uses? Uh, the water dependent zone is only at that top right corner at the boathouse. Okay. Uh, so that's how we're complying there. That's all uh, boating and, and waterfront service. Okay. One of the site plans actually shows the Chapter 91 lines and um, it, it really uh, came to be a part of how we parcelized the, the lot so that one of these lots could, um, you know, straightforwardly be water dependent and, uh, um, and, and manage through the, the, the process of uh, the state filings, et cetera. But we've been working through the complexities of, of those lines and, and where they, they fit uh, the setbacks from the water's edge to comply with Chapter 91. Uh, so we're inside that jurisdiction area. But as you mentioned, the, the idea of open space, you can get to and, and return from this site safely uh, with the public way improvements that we're, we're creating at Erickson Street. Okay. So let me just also ask you a couple of other questions. Are there Please. going to be any, th there are no three family um, units proposed? You max out at two bedrooms? That's correct, Madam Chair. There are no three bedrooms proposed, but the, the on-site affordable is at 16 units, I should have said. 16 units out of the 120 are affordable. Correct. And what percentage of that is that? Uh, it's slightly over 13. It rounds up to, to 16. It's 15 and a fraction. It's 13%. 13%. Okay. Um, and then finally, talk to me uh, and ask about um, traffic because this is a not not a highly traffic zone except for events um so tell us how this this development and how the neighborhood will accommodate the traffic yes um so that was obviously a, a clear focus over the last five years during large project review and the community outreach and the the project mix has changed over that time in order to optimized for traffic. At one time, there was actually a hotel proposed, and that was eliminated. Uh, but I'll turn it over uh, uh, to uh, Quinn. There's actually going to be a pilot for a shuttle service, if you can talk about that. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so there, there's really three items here to, to talk through about uh, traffic, as it, it was a concern from the neighborhood uh, that was brought up through the Article 80 process. Um, in doing that, through, through that process, we, we did have three major um, items that were listed in the, in the BPDA board memo. The first being a TDM plan that we worked on with the BPDA and BTD to uh, ensure that we're uh, limiting and reducing the amount of traffic coming to and from the site. Um, so that includes bike parking, um, blue bike station, um, et cetera, um, trying to get people out of cars. Um, 
The okay, second so we, one is... We know that bikes can be kind of risky when you just get off of this peninsula. Um, so besides bikes, uh, what else? Did you say a yeah. shuttle? Yeah. Yep, so the, the second uh, program is a pilot shuttle service um, that would go from the site to uh, JFK UMass Station connecting uh, this neighborhood back to the MBTA station. Um, that was a, um, a specific item that we wanted to make sure that was in this plan, uh, not only to help the neighborhood, but also to help us as the future office tenants as well. And, uh, and then, and then the, so my apologies, the third item was the, um, was a slow street study. So uh, through, through that um, Article 80 process, we did um, include a slow street study uh, to be funded by the proponent and, and facilitated by us um, that would replicate the BTD slow streets program uh, for this neighborhood to reduce the amount of um, traffic and speeding through the neighborhood. So there is no zip car parking or something like that for those who periodically need cars um, well, we for grocery we, shopping or things like that? We haven't negotiated the TAPA yet. I suspect that will be an ask, uh, but it's, it's so far it's not been uh, required. There are, by the way, 25% EV vehicle uh, spaces though, so that, that has been already baked in. Okay. Um, okay, so let's see if my math is right. So there's a 100 car garage plus 15, so 115 spaces for 120 residential units and 36,000 square feet of office. Okay, okay, um, let's just see. How are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? Well, this is quite a project. Um, the plans technically are, are really good. Uh, I think the questions that I have really have to do with the fact that this is sort of a jewel of a site and there's very few like them uh, anywhere in the city. And so it just raises a whole, whole host of questions. So let me start with, um, first of all, on the residential units, um, is there a mix of rental and uh, for sale or is there all one or the other? I believe it's all rental. It's all rental. And you said that the affordability was 13%, which is the absolute minimum under uh, you know, the city regulations is, was there not, I'm surprised there wasn't pressure to, uh, uh, from the community to, to move that number higher. Yeah, so, uh, uh, th thank you. Um, uh, and, and, uh, one of the things that we worked on when we first came onto this project a year ago was to bring the resident, uh, the IDP units back into the project. Originally there were plans to be moved, um, uh, somewhere else, um, outside of this project. Um, as, as part of it, so we, we did work to make sure that that was included back into the program here, uh, which, to, which took a good amount of effort on our ends to ensure that we could meet that 13%. So 13, there's 13% 13 on site. Is there additional uh, contribution to the, uh, the fund? Uh, there is not. Uh, we, we are just over the 13% uh, at 13.3, so no. And well, you, I mean, you've, uh, you've hit the minimum, but the, I just, my point is it is the minimum. But uh, let me move on. Uh, I mean, the real the real question is that uh, is this going to be a you know this is what this is one of the like I said sort of a jewel of the waterfront of Boston, and um, it's been underutilized, and this will certainly um, make a much better utilization of the space. But the real question is has to do with public access, and if you've got 150 space parking spaces. And you've got 120 or so. To, don't if I'm a little wrong on the numbers. Uh, 120 residential units, and you've got office. Um, where is the public? If someone drives there, where are they going to park? Now, it's a, it's a good question. Um, I want to first emphasize that the public access is not just on the perimeter. Uh, so there is across the whole site. But but you're correct in that probably the most likely public users are going to be the neighborhood residents. That's, that's true because this, the peninsula is rather isolated and there is not sufficient on-site parking to welcome large numbers of the public. But I'll let Quinn talk about what his vision is for who would come and visit. Well, before Quinn starts, let me, I mean, let me just sort of make a point. Um, uh, yes, it's an isolated peninsula, but what you are doing is gonna make it a much more attractive peninsula 
in the same way that you know when the when the UMass Boston campus was built, um, you know, there's it's not just people, uh, college students who walk that perimeter on the Harbor Walk there. I think you you're going to end up. This is going to be an attraction for the whole city. And, and, uh, I, I would also, yeah, and, and uh, to pick up on Mark's point, we don't want yeah. it to feel privatized yeah, because no, it is not. public. And if any, I mean, I don't live anywhere close to Charlestown, but I love walking that Charlestown waterfront and I love yeah. walking that East Boston waterfront. Um, right, and so, so the question then becomes, how do you accommodate it so it is open to the rest of the city? Uh, Madam Chair, may, may I address that point? Um, I'll, um, as, as a Dorchester resident, um, we, all, we also have that harbor walk around UMass Boston, which is highly utilized by all the residents. Right now, you can't walk to this site. Uh, so uh, the fact that we do actually have lay-by parking spaces on the outside that one could come in that would be, you know, marked with a, a number of, uh, you know, limitations on the hours of, of use and sort of shorter time periods, somebody would be able to park and, and be there if they're, if they're less able to walk. But right now, this doesn't even exist as an amenity anybody could walk or bike to. And there are plenty of people that are doing that around the waterfront. No, yes, no, no. I mean, look, look. I mean, let me let me continue. I mean, clearly, this is, it's an it's a it's. I mean, I, I find it one of the nicest parts of Boston, and I think when when if this project goes through, it's going to be that much more attractive. So you've got a widened and meandering Harbor Walk experience. I'm not quite sure what that means. Um, uh, public program, open space. Uh, you got a, a bunch of you know plantings, etc. I mean, this is going to be a very attractive part of the city. Uh, you are really creating something very new, and I think potentially very exciting. I just want to make sure that, as the chair said, it's not privatized and not restricted, because it won't be. It, and I think yes, you're going to yes. have you're going to have to be prepared to accommodate a very high degree of interest in this. Absolutely, and, and just um, I, and, and thank you for that. And on the, on the other end, I did want to mention that um, uh, one of the comments through the neighborhood process that, that we've heard was that we also don't want to drive too many people to this destination. The neighborhood is already concerned about the amount of people coming into and out of the neighborhood um, as is, and and they um, uh, on the other end would like to see this not become um, you know the um, the destination uh, that everybody in the city uh, comes to, rather um, a public space that's open to them and has, uh, you know, frequent visitors um, and no, instead of being that. I, 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 get, I get that. I just, you know, I, I know Port Norfolk quite well, and it's mostly single family homes, and it's a sort of isolated, tight little neighborhood. Uh, but the truth is, um, this is going to be a very appealing part of the Boston waterfront. And I just, I think it's a pipe dream to think that this is uh, not going to be uh, uh, appealing to a, to a lot of people who, beyond who, who don't just live in Port Norfolk. Right. Yeah. And and the last thing we wanted to do was close this site off. This isn't op open to the public, um, which alludes to a little bit of the street improvements that we did along Erickson Street to really invite the public into this so, space. So. so let me just see. Um, the, the trouble that I continue to have, and I don't know if Mark is satisfied, but the trouble I continue to have is that the Tidelands are Commonwealth Tidelands, and they are held for the common, for everybody who lives in the Commonwealth. It's not meant to be privatized for the residents who live in this proposed development or residents who live on the peninsula. It's supposed to be open to the public. Um, and so I just want closure to understand exactly how you're going to provide some parking. I don't mean all 100 spaces, but some percentage of parking for those random visitors who would want to just enjoy an afternoon understanding this part of the city. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, so as uh, Jared had mentioned before, there is a shared parking program on this site. Uh, we expect that 
uh, many of the residential users will be, um, e even though we are providing a plethora of opportunities to use transit, that they will be using their cars during the day, uh, which should open up some parking in that regard. And um, as well as on the surface, um, on the street level, there are, and, and um, please, Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong, about 20 parking spaces as well. On, on street parking, as well as, as I had mentioned, um, in this diagram, right in, in between buildings B and C, there are places that one could uh, leave their car, park, parallel park for a short period of time. Um, now, how long is it going to take for resident permit parking stickers to go up? I mean, um, you know, so so I think we've beaten that, but that I, I think you understand clearly what we are asking for. Hopefully, while we continue yeah. the discussion, you can figure out exactly how that is going to be accommodated. The second thing is on the waterfront. Is that also in a certain way privatized or is there going to be um, any programs or anything that is that is going to bring um, you know residents from you know a little bit in from Dorchester to that to that pier to that public pier. Well, Madam Chair, that this is a uh, a balancing point for this this project and how it was formed and, and our uh, we mentioned some of the initial uses that um, did look like we were creating a destination here. We have been able to work uh, with the community on uh, the scaling of this kind of open space and, and the words meandering and, and pathways are intended to create a, a place where people can move. Uh, the program open space is actually called out here on this plan would be around the pier, uh, potential uh, water taxi um, access, uh, fishing resources and things that people can get onto the water sheet. Uh, these are amenities that we've worked in. Um, obviously, we need this project to move forward to um, solidify what the program vision is there, but Chapter 91 is very clear about how um, we would be using our uh, open space in the future. Um, and um, But really, driving a destination and making sure people know that this is there, this is the open space that people deserve in Dorchester. Um, and. Uh, to, to be a, a rare kind of project, um, we do need to balance what, the, what we've learned from this community on what they want to see here. Um, yes, I, I, you know, I think a, a number of us know Fort Norfolk pretty well. A number of us know it from the WS zoning. But, you know, there are some good programs like, you know, all the work that's happened in East Boston on Pierce Park and that sailing program or other things like that, that could bring some, you know, good activity to children and youth in the neighborhood um, that I'm surprised that you haven't um, explored some further because all I can see as I look at this is just an extension of some of the stuff that's happened in, um, in, in the seaport where um, we look back and say, oh my God, how did it end up being and feeling so isolated, so privatized, so non-welcoming in the design, but more importantly, in the programming. Um, and I, and I, will, I will put my, my hat on from my um, experience is that now, in the organization I used to work for, we are trying to figure out how to bring equity to the waterfront in the seaport. You know, how do you bring residents who have very little experience on the waterfront to the waterfront to enjoy this common, this public amenity? Uh, and I, I would uh, add, Madam Chair, that um, this group has, has been very dedicated to the uh, this being a, a working waterfront that uh, primarily um, has a, um, a focus on, on fishing and um, and using um, uh, the water safely um, with a new marina. Um, this would be very different than the seaport in its quality. Um, its scale is much different. Um, and actually, you would be getting much closer to 
uh, people who would be using the water than you would in the seaport. And this really has tapered back from that kind of initial vision um, to something that's much more neighborhood scale um, towards that. And, and we have not talked a lot about um, our uh, amenities and outreach into that part of the community. Um. Any other questions from the board? No, uh, just uh, I would just summarize, Madam Chair. The plan, the plans themselves are are very good. <laughs> Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak um, in support of this proposal? Um, yes, Madam Chair. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Project has gone through the community process for over four and a half years and through multiple revisions for design, unit count, green space, and everything else in terms of development with both support and opposition. Throughout the process, neighbors expressed concerns regarding climate mitigation efforts. However, there seemed to be consensus regarding acceptable unit count, parking, and design. The BPDA board voted in support of the project in January. At this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McEachern with City Council, Frank Baker's office. Uh, we're in support of the project, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we have support letters. All right, Minor, go ahead. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Minor Perez representing the Carpenters Union. Madam Chair, on behalf of hundreds of Union Carpenters that legal work throughout the city of Boston, I want to go on record and support, in particular, our members that live in the city of Dorchester. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no additional raised hands. Um, oh, sorry, the uh, raised hand just came up. Um, Go to Stephen Donahue. Um, go ahead, Stephen. Are you looking to give testimony on this proposal? Yes. This is Pastor Steve Donahue from Christ Community Church, 51 Walnut Street. I've been at the pastor for 20 years and lived there for about four years in the community. Mr. Donahue, Mr. Donahue uh, Pastor Donahue, I believe that you're here. Were you here for Erickson or were you here for Clapp Street? Uh, I was in support of Erickson, that's true, but I I okay. just came in and seeing this um, being the waterfront, and I was just concerned about the volume of getting in and out of the port. Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I do know that you had wanted to speak about another project. Um, yes, that's ahead. abutting, yes, that abuts the Christ Community Church. I was just a little, um, I love the idea of having the port uh, and that many residents there as a pastor. I'm just a little concerned with the the in and out of there. It's just, it's hard to get out of the port. Uh, being a resident there for four years, I'm just a little I'm wondering about the tra traffic volume coming in and out. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, and John Lyons, I'd like to request to unmute you. Or Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. Thank you for allowing me to speak. My name is John Lyons. I live at 176 Walnut Street in Dorchester. I am the president of the Port and Port Civic Association. I was a member of the IAG for this project. I'm also a board member of the Nipponsa Greenway Council. Uh, if you could bear with me, Madam Chair, I know you, you like to move these things along. I've got two paragraphs and eight bullet points. I will start by saying- Mr. Lyons, don't read to us. Just kind right, of- I'm just referencing. Okay, well, good. I can't, I can't give you all this off the top of my head. Okay. I think after spending, spending hundreds of hours in the last five years, together with other committed community members evaluating this project, working in good faith to find ways to resolve the issues and compromise in a manner which would benefit the neighborhood as well as our future neighbors. It's more than frustrating having worked with changing personnel at the BPDA and within the development team to finally see the project rush to a conclusion at the end of the COVID madness. We all know the way things have worked in the last couple of years with these Zoom meetings. It's just not the same as meeting in person. And we really did try in good faith to reach 
some sort of common ground on this project, I will start by saying we want union jobs, we want housing, but we deserve a project that works for the community as well as our future neighbors and respects the unique environment adjacent to the Neponset River within the area of critical environmental concern where this project sits. It's literally the mouth of the Neponset River right in the estuary. It's a very special project, as everyone has said. As far as the open space is concerned, we've got a four acre park, Finnegan Park, within 1,000 feet of this site. So dangling a more open space is not going to work to get into years. What I would really suggest here, if anyone, everyone would consider, respectfully defer this project until the process can be complete, completed in good faith. And the alternative, the way it sits now is to deny because it just doesn't fit, it's premature. But to go way back, 1988, which is in ancient history, but it was 1988, a Port Norfolk plan, a definitive plan, was prepared by the Boston Redevelopment Authority with input from every relevant state and local agency. It identified every issue raised by the community members during this process. That was followed by the first iPod in the city, the creation of the Port Norfolk District in the, in the City of Boston zoning code, and that district information was essentially incorporated by reference into Article 65, which was adopted in 2001. It's not ancient history. One of the most important things that the BRA plan itself suggested was that the waterfront should not be lined with tall structures, and yet, in a neighborhood with a 35 foot height limit, which is respected everywhere else, these people are going to almost double that height. There's no justification for it other than their economic need. And I noticed in the nearly 30 minute presentation by the proponent, there was not one mention of any kind of a hardship. And a hardship is a critical element of granting zoning relief. I don't need to tell you that, but I just noticed that and I, I think it needs to be brought up. The density, this project will result in a 43% increase in the number of housing units on less than 10% of the land in the peninsula. The water dependent use is a critical change. It will change one of the last pieces of working waterfront in the city of Boston to essentially a residential enclave with an attached office structure. The shared parking plan has not been tested. If it fails, the only alternative is to park on the neighborhood streets, or frankly in the river. And I'm not joking when I say that we're isolated on the outside of the Southeast Expressway and the railroad tracks. There's no other place to go. During COVID, the business model has changed for office workers. We all know that. We're remote here now. Office work now is, is largely remote. No indication that it'll ever go back fully to the old office model. Their reliance on shared parking, I think, may have worked before COVID, but I doubt it will work now. The, and one other interesting question about their parking, if you look at their site plan, not part of their project, but immediately adjacent is a distillery. That distillery has an occupancy rating by ISD of 149 persons. It's got 19 parking spaces. They regularly run events in that, in that space. Up until now, they've used the overflow area of this site for their overflow parking. I'm sure that's not gonna happen when there are 120 units with 115 parking spaces. Immediately adjacent on the other side is the Venezia complex, an extremely good restaurant, a great function hall, a great winery, no complaints about any of their operations. They've got 350 parking spaces. They're all used at certain points during the year. There's no other place to go. This is a public transportation desert. The site is half a mile from the nearest bus line and over one mile to the red line. The traffic access issues were identified in 1988 when there was much less traffic. Even then it was essentially concluded that the traffic issues are insurmountable, particularly in the parts of Turkey. Finally, the marina plan, I suspect may just be a Trojan horse to qualify something under chapter 91 because their construction management plan schedules that to be completed last out of the entire project. There are many informed residents in this neighborhood who are active in an, in an existing yard club who strongly believe that it's not financially feasible based on current costs. In fact, this mowing area has not been dredged in 50 years. The Port Norfolk Yard Club 
with half the size, which has a regular program of more for dredging and mooring area every six to seven years, recently spent a million dollars um, dredging their area because of the difficulty in, um, in disposal. So again, um, I'm a capitalist. I'm, I'm not uh, a socialist saying we want to take over private space, but I think this project is at least twice the size of what would actually work for that site. I think the uses are inappropriate. I think Boston cannot kiss goodbye the hope of ever having uh, real water dependent uses apart from yacht clubs and, and bars on the waterfront. This marina used to be a, a um, sort of a recreational marina, but it also had a very well functioning um, boat repair operation. They had a 50 ton lift. Boston Police and Boston Fire Department boats used to be pulled out and serviced in that location, and now they have to go outside the city. But so Mr. Lyons, you know, I, I was waiting for you because I remember your role in the Port Norfolk zoning. Um, but I do need to ask you if there's, if you can close your comments because we do have others who are waiting to, to comment, okay? Thank you. You're on mute, Mr. Lyons. Mr. Lyons, can you unmute yourself? I'm sorry okay. about that. In, in conclusion, thank you very much for, for hearing me out. I, my only thought here is that a, a no build option is not a rational option. I said that in the beginning, I've said it for five years. This project is too tall, it's too dense. I think the mix of uses is inappropriate. The parking is nowhere near sufficient. I'd be willing to spend more time working on it with an open mind and I would respectfully request that the developer consider the same thing and that the board uh, allow it to follow here, even if it's only for three to four months. Thank Just you. Mr. Lisa, yeah. you've, you've been spending a lot of time uh, tech, uh, sending notes. Would you like to go on the record? Let me send him a message to Anita. You asking? Uh, his hand is up, as I can yeah. see. Oh, no, okay. maybe it was. I don't know. Okay. Mr. Are talking you... to me again, Madam Chair? No. Um, Mr. Lisa, you've been unmuted? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak. I find this a very exciting project, but after 16 years of working in coastal coast management and eight years as director of the Seaport Advisory Council, I find the project as presented does take away our opportunities and access for the public in general. It basically privatizes the area and causes a lot of concern that the Chapter 91 regulations that requires that you have to set back and then options for riparian rights are not being uh, maintained. And I would like to see the uh, opponents take this back, work a little bit more about how they allow people to access from the street to the water's edge and for people coming from the water's edge when landed by the ferries or whatever boats you're having, where do they go once, once they were on the land side? I think it needs a little more work. I agree. Um, it is a very nice looking project, but I agree with uh, Mr. Lyons that there's some work that needs to be done and maybe a little more thought would be helpful because we do need access to the water's edge for people who are inland and for people who come to visit. And you're on a very, very nice site. And I know because I go to the Nisia restaurant at least 10 times a year. And I like walking around. I'm sure the people do too. So thank you very much for letting me speak. Mr. Alicia, could you put your address on the record, please? You said your name, but not your address. Yes, Louis Alicia, 68 Silver Street, Boston, Mass, 02121. Thank you. Okay, let's hear from uh, one more person. Okay. Um, Cheryl S. Um, sent a request to unmute you. Good afternoon. Go ahead, Cheryl. Uh, yes, good afternoon. Can I be heard? Yep. Can you state your name and address for the record? Yes. Uh, greeting, Madam Chair and members of the board. I'm an owner and resident in the Port Norfolk Peninsula neighborhood at 171 Walnut Street. My name is Cheryl Sweden. At this time, I'm in opposition of the Neponset Court project moving forward today. My request is that a decision be deferred today for further discussion with the Port Norfolk neighborhood. I'm concerned how this project has advanced thus far. It's my understanding that the impact advisory group never reached a consensus and no final public meeting was ever held. Traffic is still a concern. I heard uh, information regarding a trial shuttle 
that was referenced in the presentation today. I have heard many presentations. I am also a member of the Port Norfolk um, Neighborhood Association and have been following this project for a little over two years since I have become a resident of Boston and owner and resident in the uh, peninsula. It is concerning regarding the traffic. So my concern okay, is with the you. shuttle, with the mm -hmm. shuttle, um, that that is a trial and what would happen moving forward and would other um, residents other than those involved at the Erickson Street or residents or occupants be um, have access to that shuttle. Okay. Um, the other concern. Ma'am, ma thank you. I, I should have, it's my problem. I should have reminded everybody to give us new information. Um, so thank you. Thank you for participating in this process um, and thank you for giving us your comments. Um, so, um, let me just see, I think, okay, who is this, um, who is Emma, okay, so let's see, uh, Jeff, um, you know, I know this has been through an Article 80 process, uh, Mr. Hampton from the BPDA, this has been through the Article 80 process, it sounds like the BPDA board has approved it, um, but there still seems to be a number of outstanding issues about the waterfront and waterfront access um, for the general public. Uh, is there any comment you want to make or anybody who from the BPDA who might want to make a comment? Yeah, Madam Chair, I'd like to defer to Stephen Harvey, who was the PM for this project. Sorry. Yes, please put your name and address on the record and if you could very specifically respond to the questions that Mr. Ehrlich and I have been focused on um, and that is uh, general public access and maintaining of that access and I think somebody else also uh, suggested something about um, how will members of the public bring their boats in there and what's the, the way of accessing that. So um, my name is Stephen Harvey, and I uh, live on Armadine Street in Dorchester, uh, neighborhood in Boston. Um, what I'll say to the, the, as far as access to the, the, the shoreline, um, the project does in its uh, community, um, our mitigation does provide 2.17 uh, acres, 97,000 square feet of publicly, uh, privately um, owned public space. So the public will have access to over two acres of, of space. Um, we made sure that um, not only uh, does this project uh, contribute in that way, but also mitigating some of the traffic concerns and some of the, um, I want to say traffic concern and some of the resilient concerns that the community brought up to the best ability of this project. We did also originally, I'm the third project manager on this project, but when this project was originally proposed in 2017, um, it was much um, bigger than what was proposed, and after conversations with the IAG, there was a reduction to the point where the, the um, unit count is at 120 and the, the mostly used for office and, and water recreational use. Now, um, how the, the, the wharf will be run, that would be determined how, because um, it is a, a, a private entity, the, the wharf itself. But um, it, I, I believe that the, the development team will be working with the neighborhood uh, to, to make sure that public access is as, as can be as maintained as possible. The, the development team at RISE tends to stay on the site and have their office on their site. And uh, meetings, we've made sure that and made an understanding that they should be a good neighbor to the residents around them. So, you know, Mr. Harvey, I know it's difficult coming in as the, did you say third project manager on this? Yeah. I, know it's, it's, I know it's a difficult thing to do. But um, has the City of Boston Environment Department um, looked at some of the thoughts about climate ready, about you know introducing more wetlands or whatever it is, to just make sure that all these uh, these these buildings will in fact be sustainable for the long term? Yes, that was at, at, during my time as project manager. That was. Um, putting together a community benefits, community benefits package and mitigation 
was um, my number one role. Uh, the reason the discussions that we had with our resiliency team was making sure that the buildings, one, were at uh, the appropriate levels for water rise, and also that uh, folks that were living in the building or working in the building would be able to enter and leave the site without any emergency assistance. So uh, besides the transportation mitigation that was provided, which was substantial, um, we also made sure that resiliency concerns um, were priority. The, um, that is what Port Norfolk and the community absolutely have as their number one concern. And they have done a lot of, with, they have done a lot already with the open space that they have surrounding the area. But we made sure to, in effect, fortify that. Okay, thank you. Um, so let me um, go back to the development team. Uh, you've heard what the concerns are. Um, can you just let me know um, what your thoughts are on how you will uh, provide or propose to provide um, public access and to ensure that that stays into the future? Because I, I, I feel your tentativeness and I understand the, um, the concerns that the Port Norfolk community has but we also have to understand that the waterfront is a public resource. Yes, Madam Chair, understood completely. Uh, it, it's clear that uh, we need to give you more detail, so I would suggest that we defer uh, in order to provide it. I can, I can state categorically that the public access must be provided. As, as you well know, especially in the uh, Chapter 91 area, there, there will be a management plan that's approved uh, by uh, Mass DEP waterways, but I think we would all be best served if we uh, provide that information explicitly so that you have it and you have these details. We don't want there to be any question uh, that, that there could possibly be a privatization, which is not our intention. And when do you expect uh, DEP waterways to um, you know, provide you with their decision? Uh, it's probably not in the near horizon. It's probably months away knowing their backlog. They will not review the management plan until you get through the licensing process, but that does not mean we can't provide our proposal to this board sooner. Um, I, um, I'm i just gonna, so, so Ms. Ambassador, can you mute everybody but the board members, please? Sure. Um, so I'd like to um, just have a conversation with board members because I do feel that in, in a lot of ways, the development team has thought through their projects, but there are some outstanding issues. I think my question is whether, since we've heard the entire merits of the case, we've heard um, the, the neighborhood, we've heard everybody, um, is it thoughtful of us to make a decision today, but, but have some kind of information or, or, or have the final decision uh, dependent on the submittal of certain pieces of information. So this is something I toss out to the board. May we have a discussion on that? Um, I would be prepared to make a motion today with the request that the uh, development, that final approval be contingent on the development team providing us with more information. And, uh, I, I, this has been a lengthy, lengthy process. Uh, in many ways, it's a really good proposal. Um, so that's my, that's my feeling. Anybody else? Yeah, I'm, I, I would be fine with that as well. I... Okay, so, so, so uh, Mr. Ehrlich, do you want to put that motion on the table? Uh, okay. an approval with, I'm assuming, design review. And let's just, let's just um, itemize what it is that we want to see, okay? Yeah, I, I'm prepared to make a motion to approve this project with BPDA design review and ask that the, within a specified time frame, uh, two months that the development team provides us with more information about guarantees of public access, uh, what the amenities will be, um, how the marina will be handled, and any issues of additional transportation and parking 
um, that may come up uh, as uh, mitigation for the impact of this project. So if I can, uh, um, so there are within two months, we're going to bullet point it and I'm just going to reverse your thing only because it's just right in front of me is we, within two months, we want our transporta transportation details. That's A. And B is everything connected to the waterfront related to waterfront public access, marina. Uh, and I'm sorry, I might have missed something else. Uh, Mr. No, I mean, that's generic enough. We want to be able to enjoy the meandering harbor walk experience. <laughs> And, and, and also and also use of the waterfront right because we want to make sure that yeah okay do you want anything else that um anything else that um that we have uh, that we would want to understand Madam Manager, this, is, this is tom uh just yep. if the board does need additional information from the developer i would suggest a deferral um, to consider any new information because the open meeting I'm gonna, I'm gonna, the I'm, gonna, I think I think what we will do I'm sorry Tom to interrupt you but we can bring this as board final arbiter to um, not um, uh, not board is it board final arbiter um, to 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 reconsider all these things so that I think that will meet open meeting law but in the meantime the applicant does have a chance to respond to what it is that we need i'm sorry i just went dark and i just want to know that everything's okay is everything okay okay fine you can hear me fine my screen went went blank so i don't know what's happening um so um does that make sense tom bringing it in as board final arbiter Madam Chair, I, I just, you know, if the board is going to change its decision on based on the new information, I think that re noticing and having like a, just a deferral for us. I, I, yeah, I, I just think. feel that we've heard the, we've heard the, um, the merits of it and in its entirety. And I think, I don't think our decision will change because in concept, we are, um, we are in support, but there are details which we are not in support of, um, and that is and that is what is what is uh, uh, tying us all up in knots here. So that would still be my recommendation that the board okay. have a. Okay. Support. So, so we have a motion. We have a second. Anything else to add to those two things? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, can I ask the technical team at, um, at uh, the board, if you could please see if there's a reason that I cannot be, see the screen or have anything on it? We can That's see you. Uh, yeah, but I, okay. I don't know what happened. Um, okay, so let's, I'm sorry for this. It is now almost one o'clock. Um, let us take a five minute break, reconvene at one, and then we will go to the rediscussions, okay? Madam Chair, we still have one case. Oh, we still have one case. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. That's okay. Let's go ahead. Let's call the last case for 1030. Calling case BOA 129579 32 to 32C nice. Taylor Street. And by Google. Save big on the new Samsung Galaxy S22 series. Sorry, let me that, I don't know. Uh, that was for some reason. Okay, got so I'm okay. all thank you. Sorry. This was to demolish an existing structure, erect a four unit dwelling townhouse design buildings and providing parking for eight vehicles by an existing curb cut. The violation is Article 65, Section 8. The MFR is forbidden use in a 2F5000 subdistrict. Article 65, Section 21, off street parking is insufficient. Oh, I'm sorry. Our off street parking requirement proposed parking is tandem, which limits maneuverability. <coughs> Article 65, Section 32, this is in the overlay district. Review required. Article 65, Section 9, the fluidity ratio is excessive. Article 65, Section 9, the bullet has excessive in stories. And Article 65, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Thank you, uh, Mr. Secretary. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Mark Savatsky. I'm the property owner and developer uh, for 32 Taylor Street. 
Uh, and for the record, my address is 4 Payne Street, Dorchester, Mass, 02122. This application seeks to raise an existing structure on a 7,600 square foot lot and erect four family style townhouses intended for home ownership. Each townhouse is 1,730 square feet with three beds and two and a half baths and two off street tandem parking spaces. Uh, each includes a private roof deck which shall be accessed via a hatch. We're seeking relief uh, for multifamily MFR, uh, whereas this is a 2 of 5,000 subdistrict. Uh, although tandem parking is allowed under Article 65, each spot must be independently maneuverable, and so we are seeking relief uh, for vehicle maneuverability. Our FAR is 0.91, whereas 0.5 is allowed. Uh, building height under number of stories uh, is 3, whereas uh, 2.5 is allowed. Uh, finally, side yard setback on the left is 5.5 feet, whereas 10 is allowed, and side yard setback on the right is sufficient. Uh, thank you for your time and attention, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, so your side yard where you have um, the 5.5 proposed, how yes. far is the adjacent building from you? Um, if we were to pull up a street view, uh, my estimate it would be about 12 feet, maybe 15 feet. Okay, okay. Um, and those roof decks would be individual roof decks, okay. Um, how are the uh, plans, um, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are good, uh, no question. I think um, this side of the, the area has a mix of, of different size buildings and I think it's, uh, it's fairly consistent with some of the adjacent uh, buildings. And there okay. seems to be- uh, Mr. D'Amico spoke on this? Yeah. Okay. Would you like to go to the record, please? <clears throat> Yes, please. Um, this is from Mr. D'Amico at BTD. In regards to 32 to 34 C Taylor Street, reduce the number of spaces from eight to four. Okay. Um, also, do you have your condensers next to your neighbors? Uh, we can relocate those uh, to the roof mount chair. They are shown on the side yard, but uh, I'll be happy to make that change. Yeah, we hear enough complaints about those. Um, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition? Yes, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. George Flynn with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office hosted an abutters meeting for the project on February 8th. Abutters and the Civic Association were generally in support. There was some concern regarding open space and size. At this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McEachern, City Councilor Frank Baker's office, we'd like to go on record in support of the project. Chair, we, Secretary here, we do have a few letters of support. Thank you. How about raise hand, I'll start with you, Bob. You looking to give testimony on this proposal? Uh, yes, I just, um, I'm concerned about maneuverability, and I think- Can you raise your name and address for the record, please? Uh, Bob D'Amico, Boston Transportation Department. Oh, sorry. Okay, thanks, Bob. <laughs> okay. All right. And then uh, I'll go to um, Stephen Donahue. I think he might have been on a previous. Yeah. Okay. I know Hi. 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 This is this is Pastor Steve Donahue. I'm a direct abutter to this property. It's in back of the church. I'm in favor of this and I think it'd be good for the community and obviously for the church. Thank you. Thank you. And then uh, John Lyons, uh, let me see. Okay. You looking to give testimony on this one? Can you? Yes. Yes. Um, my name is John Lyons, 176 Walnut Street. I'm president of the Port Melbourne Civic Association. Um, we met on this. We took a vote. It was unanimous to support. Uh, we just want to say specifically that this developer is a great example of how things should be done. We went to the abutters first, you figured out what would work. Uh, we designed a building which fits in with the architecture around it. And the violation on the parking is, is his attempt to create more parking than is required by the code. Okay, so, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, um, I, Ms. Ambassador, anybody else? Um, no, ma'am, we have no additional right hands. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Um, think with BPDA design reviews, I think specifically looking at the rear 
yard, the parking. I'm not sure. I understand the conflict of too much parking and too little, but I think there's a blend here that could work yeah. um, okay. for the community. And, and I think the BPDA recommendation says with attention to materials and surrounding neighborhood context. Yeah, and the condenser is to the roof, but I assume that's a pretty easy one. Yeah. So you including materials and uh, neighborhood context? Correct. Okay. Is there a second? A second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Now 101, we will reconvene at 110. Um, okay, thank you. Okay, Recording can you stopped. make that 115? I don't have the
Recording in progress. This meeting is being recorded. The March 22nd uh, Zoning Board of Appeal is now resuming. Before we begin, um, I did want to make a change uh, to request that the, that, the, um, that the minutes reflect that I misspoke and that I did mean to say call up the chair rather than BFA um, to get an update on those addresses on Erickson Street on the information that they are requesting. Okay, okay. Manager, I'll make sure reflect that. Okay, thank you. And thank you for your input on it. That's why I was kind of confused about, about what was going on, but at least I got the language right. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Fortune, with your Madam, Madam Chair, it is um, 115, I'll be doing 116. Um, Mr. Joseph has an appointment at 145. And I was wondering if we could take the interpretation out of out of context because it is 1, 115, 116. Um, if we do need him, do you think that we need him? Um, let's see. So yes, we do because they're suggesting that ISD odd. So yes, let's go to okay. the. Okay. Is the applicant on for uh, Columbia Road? What's the name? Francis Burke. Francis Burke. Francis Burke. Well, somebody representing. Take a look. Uh, 15, oh, yeah, yeah. I do see Avery's hand. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm going to call into the record. Okay. Calling case BOA 128 6861 1514R, Columbia Road. Name and address for the record, please. Francis Burke, 24 Mount Hope Street, Dedham, Mass, 02026. Okay, so in this case, the petitioner, and that is that you, Mr. Burke? Yes. You seek a determination that ISD erred in issuing the permit U4912728621. The yes, permit, that's correct. The permit was issued as an allowed use. Is there anybody on who is representing the owner at 1514R Columbia Road? Is that you, Matthew Fitzgerald? You can unmute yourself, you are a Yes, <clears throat> Madam Chair, uh, Matt Fitzgerald, Sullivan Worcester. I will be representing uh, 1514 Condominium Trust, Columbia Road Condominium Trust, um, and one of the unit owners, Lauren Toman. Okay, so Mr. So now that I have that, and then is, and um, Mr. Joseph, will you put your name and address on the record too? Is Mark Joseph on or not? I'm not sure. I just, I just spoke with uh, Mark Joseph. He is on the Zoom. I just don't know whether he's now, I just session. want to make sure that ISD is represented on this, too. Can you hear us? Are you on the, the name of this Mark? Or is that Mark going? Mm -hmm. Okay, in the meantime, um, Mr. Burke, can you tell us exactly why it is you think that ISD erred in its determination? Yes. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. 1514R Columbia Road, South Boston. It's in Ward 7. It's non-conforming structure behind a structure. Mm -hmm. Non-conforming, extension of non-conforming, Article 9, Section 1 sex, says it needs public notice. Okay. So why, why are you thinking that this was issued in error? So tell us what, what happened to the property that um, made you think that this was a mistake in the permit issuance by ISD? Um, I, 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 I received documents from Mark Joseph on December 20th. And in those documents, I discovered um, a fraudulent forged certified plot plan and a flawed maneuverability report which shows vehicles striking each other. I visited with the engineer who, who prepared the report. He says he, had, he, he did not use the Boston Zoning Code to prepare his report. I also have a, a, my own private engineer's report which I gave to the board today. So wait a second, so where do, where do you live? What's, what's your address? I, I, what, I, what is I, the problem? I, 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 
I own 1512 Columbia Road in South Boston. I'm the director of Butter. We share a right away. Okay, so you own 1512 and you share a right of way. Yes. And so your issue, your issue is with the parking? Yes, ma'am. So it's the, the layout of the parking? It's, they've, they've been written multiple violations by the city for no parking. I was assured by the, by the city that they'd be taken to court for the illegal parking. We have, so zoning this, code, we have zoning code refusals. We have violations issued. Okay. Uh, that, that, that picture you're showing right now, that's, a, that's, the, that's the forged document. I visited with the architect yeah, on that I, document. I, all, all I need to understand really is if, if, I, if I can read between the lines, Yes. Um, the issue that you are concerned with is that the parking at 1514R is there, it, it's, it's not permitted to be there, they are not allowed parking back there, and it's impacted you through damage to the vehicles at 1512? No, 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 no ma'am. No? No, man, that was re I was referring to the maneuverability report okay, that was so placed into record. Okay, maneuverability, okay. My, my, my issue is public safety. I have eight children and I have nine grandchildren, two of whom are handicapped. No, but so, you did but you did give a, 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 a suburban address. Uh, we just need to know what happens at 1512. Uh, 1512 is loca located on the beach. My extended family and myself, we spend a lot of time there. We have kayaks there, we have bicycles there, we fly kites across the street at the okay. beach. Okay, okay. Okay. And uh, if you for, for for 70 years, there's never been parking behind uh, 1514 Columbia Road. All the applications that were, were submitted said that they've been in use for 70 years. They were fraudulent. Okay, the, hold on. The then. first use of premises permit was uh, rescinded by the author uh, John Gorman. The second one I'm in possession of now was submitted with a forged. Okay, okay, Mr. Pope. Well, can, well, Mr. Pope, can you hold on, please? May I have uh, the representation for the owner at 1514 Columbia Road? Um, tell us how this permit was issued. Thank you, Madam Chair. Again, Matt Fitzgerald, Sullivan and Worcester on behalf of the permit holder, uh, 1514 Columbia Road Condominium Trust. Um, just to provide a little background and context, and I'll, I'll try to summarize as, as quickly as I can. In, in February of 2020, ISD issued a violation for the failure to secure a permit um, for three off-street parking spaces. Um, so Mr. Burke is correct in that sense. So ISD did cite my, my client in 2020. Um, my client was unaware um, that the parking spaces were never properly permitted. The, the predecessor in interest, so the prior owner, um, constructed the parking spaces without uh, securing proper permits to do so. Um, so my, my client was unaware of that uh, when, when they, they uh, purchased the property. Um, in order to correct the violation, uh, they then filed uh, a use of premises permit application um, for two parking spaces. Originally, they tried to legalize the three. Uh, they decided at some point that the maneuverability might be a little tight. So even though they had been parking three, three cars back there, um, they decided to go ahead uh, with, uh, with two parking spaces. So they filed a use of premises application um, for two parking spaces. Um, that application included a site plan uh, showing the two spaces prepared by GMA architects and a certified plot plan prepared by a registered land surveyor. Um, it also included a maneuverability study completed by Van Ass Associates, uh, which concluded sufficient maneuverability for two vehicles to be parked back there. Um, Mark Joseph is a plan examiner for this application. Uh, I'm sure he, he can certainly elaborate so, as to so, his review. So, so hold on, so, so the two parking spaces when did when did they apply for it and when was it approved um the two, they applied for it in march of 21 um if i can have one brief moment uh madam chair i believe it was march of 21. Uh, no the, the, I, I apologize the, uh, the 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 use of premises permit was issued in august of 21. okay okay it was for two parking spaces um uh Please, I don't know whose screen is. Can you please zoom in on the on the lot A, please? And so this was this is a pre-existing building. Um, so when was the building built? It it did not come to this board of appeal for its change of use or anything, did it, Mr. Fitzgerald? Yes, Madam Chair. I believe the building was built in 1944. Okay. Um, 
And please, either John, John Gorman's also uh, available. If correct me if I'm wrong, and he was the he was the one that filed the permit application. So, um, if if John can speak up for any incorrect information that I might be providing. Um, so, so in other words, it's always been a three-family. It was only the issue of the parking, and um, it's, it's, it's currently a two-family, Madam Chair. Sorry, it's a so it's a two-family. Correct. Okay. Okay, two family, and so you, okay, got it, okay. Um, and so these were the plans, the one on the, on the screen, on the right-hand side, that was used to permit the spaces? Correct. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Joseph, can you please put your name and address on the record and tell, you, tell us what's going on? Ms. Ambassador, is Mr. Mr. Joseph on? And I'm on now. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Okay, you're off. Can I be heard now? Yes. We can hear you, Mark. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, for bringing me a hand here. So uh, there was an application for use of premises for three parking spaces, which was denied due to maneuverability. It was very tight, as, uh, as the previous uh, Intervenant said, and they, and then they applied for two, and that permit was rescinded because there was a right of way issue that went to court, and the court ordered the decision for that right of way to remain. So the 1514 rear can ask, access it anytime uh, due to previous. Uh, argument made by both the front and the back. And then they reapplied for a permit for use of premise. They submitted plans. This is the right of way here, as you can see. And then the next slide will show uh, the two parking, the two parking spaces. I believe they should be uh, there. So, so Mr. Mr. Joseph, the right of way is accessible by both parties at 1512 and 1514. Correct. And what is the width of that right of way? That's about, according to the one at the back, it's 14, it's 10 feet, 10 foot one. It's 10 feet and that's fine that's for one. accessing for driveway access. That's correct. Okay, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, th this is the slide here that shows I've asked before I, this was approved. You can see uh, space one and space two. I've asked for a maneuverability study for the two parking spaces before this approved. This is what I got from the engineer showing those two spaces can be accessed without any issue of maneuverability. And they there, and they're about nine for 20 inches. The code calls okay. for eight so, and a half. So, so, so Mr. Joseph, the parking spaces are completely out of the right of way. That is correct. Okay, okay, so I think now I understand. Okay, thank you, Mr. Book. So, uh, and and no, I have one more question for um, the representative of the owner at fifteen fourteen, and for Mr. Joseph. Was this a, was this information based on a, a registered uh, plot plan, or how was this determination made about this access and the parking? Well, we have a a registered uh, land surveyor that gives the plans here, that Mr. Uh, George Collins, it's a registered land surveyor that provided the plans by which this is uh, based on. Okay. 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 Thank you. Um, and what is his name again? George C. Collins. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. So, Mr. Burke, may I ask you a question? 
Mr. Burke, are you on? Can you unmute yourself? Ms. Ambassador, can you unmute Mr. Burke? Yeah. Yep, I sent a request. Frank, did you get the request? How's that? Yep. Okay, Mr. Burke, so you are questioning the truthfulness of the land surveying job yes. done the, by Mr. Collins. Can I respond to Fitzgerald's, ma'am? No, no, but can you just answer this question, please? All right, yeah, I, go ahead, clarify, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, so are you questioning the 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 lands the land the the plot plan come, came up that the land surveyor George George Collins came up with? I don't know that name, ma'am. The, the the plot plan that was in, that was uh, given to me by Mark Joseph was prepared by Doug Stefanoff from West Broadway in South Boston. Okay. And it was, he said he did not prepare it. It has his name on it. He says he didn't do it. He said okay, they handed Okay, he said the handwritten that. measurements are not the false handwritten measurements are not his. I hired an engineer who disputes the plan. I, I introduced the engineer's report today. Okay. okay, so Mr. And so, what was your question of the of the representative of the property owner? On on, on oh, my question to Fitzgerald, um, in in terms of the uh, one family for fifty seven years, according to ISD records, it was a single family house. I've been at my property since nineteen seventy six for, for for over forty years. Bill Spain was the owner. He testified that for, he has no driver's license. He testified for 50 years. There were no cars out there. It was a, one, a single family house on all the records. Okay, so, so I think, um, it, hold on, yeah. Mr. Buck, Mr. Buck, hold on a minute. So okay. when was the change of occupancy happening it, on, it, on it, the yeah. building, Mr. It, Fitzgerald? Was it as of right or did it go through the housing court? No, I believe it was as of right. Madam Chair, if I can have a brief moment. Uh, the zone, Madam Chair, is MFR, multifamily residential. Looks like um, in 2017, Madam Chair, according to the certificate of use and occupancy, it looks like in 217, an ALT was issued um, to convert uh, from a single to a two. Okay. Okay. So, um, so Mr. Buck, it looked like the change of occupancy was done correctly. Correct. Correction from a, from a three to a two, Madam Chair. From a three to a two. Okay. And that's May of 2017. Okay, and when did we, when did it become a three? It's it's currently a two. Oh, when was it prior to that? Yeah, I mean, what what I what needs to be traced is I think um, the you know when when did the increase of density occur, and did it occur legitimately? Well, as for the use, it's multifamily, so residential, okay. you know, so it's it's an allowed use regardless. Okay, um, but I. I but the, the driveway, the parking space. I just space put that place. on the record. Okay, thank you. So, um, so I think that we have all the information we need. Is there anything else you wanted to say, Mr. Buck? Yeah, yes, yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. The the entire building was torn down in 2016 under H 150 code. He didn't get any uh, appeal, board of appeals approval. There was no neighborhood meetings. There was no long forms. It's he asked done the, as of right, so got it. Yeah. Oh they yeah, he asked the board of appeals. He asked the board of appeals to renovate a single family. They denied him. He went back and said he had a three family. He made it into a two. Uh, the the right of way that Mark Joseph mentions is not ten feet wide. It's nine feet wide, and the right of way on 1514's property is, was is ten feet now, but the document you showed me earlier shows that it's eight foot seven wide and eight foot nine inches wide. The foundation okay. was moved illegally. Okay, so I think what we and one we more thing, have, go ahead and look, let one the speak. Thing. Go the ahead. Maneuver, the maneuverability report that is on the screen right now shows vehicle number two driving over the proposed usable open space, and it also shows use number two striking the uh, AC units. I met with the author of that report on last Friday, and he told me he did not use Boston zoning codes. He's not familiar with it. Under Article 68, it states that. Uh, for the maneuverability, they've been they've been cited for multiple violations. The maneuverability states that they need ex maneuverability area exclusive of the nine by twenty parking spots. They do not have it. The vehicles on those drawings appear to be striking each other. 
Yeah, based okay. on state. Now, now, now Ms. Uh, so Mr. Book, um, yes. Ms. Ms. Ambassador, can you kind of mute everybody so we can just have a moment? Okay. Um, so it, so the, the, the very specific question that Mr. Book asked is that um, ISD erred in issuing the permit for the parking. Um, we have confirmed that the use, the change of use, or the use as a two-family is legitimate under the MFR zoning. It was a, as of right. So it sounds to me that if Mr. C Mr. Burke has a concern about the, the, the veracity of the land survey, that it's not an issue for the board to take up. Um, the only issue before this board was about whether the parking and the access of the parking through the 10 foot or even nine foot right of way was permitted. Um, so, um, so that is how I read this. Um, any, any, any thoughts from the board? Okay, hey, does this does this mean that we are ready for a decision for a um, a motion? Uh, I'll make a motion that ISD did not err in issuing the permit for that very specific purpose. Uh, I'll second that, Eric. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Burke, and all, all other representatives who were here for this interpretation. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Calling the 1130 case was for rediscussion. Calling the first case, calling DOA 106 57 Webster Street. This is a change of arcs from a three family dwelling to a four family dwelling. Construct a new four story rail yard addition with exterior decks. Also, construct a fifth floor penthouse with roof deck, remodeling the entire building. Violations, Article 25, Section 5. This is a plug plane regulations. Article 27T, Section 9. This is in the East Boston iPod. Article 53, Section 8, a multifamily dwelling is forbidden. Article 53, Section 9, lot area is insufficient. Article 53, Section 9, the floor area ratio is excessive. Article 53, Section 9, the building height is excessive. Article 53, Section 9, the building height number of stories is excessive. Article 53, Section 9, the usable open space is insufficient. Article 53, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. Article 53, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Article 53, Section 52, roof structure restrictions. And Article 53, Section 56, off street parking is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Richard Lynn's 245 Sumner Street, East Boss, on behalf of the petitioner with me is uh, Kat Shea Varopoulos with her husband, Chris. I believe our architect, uh, Sharon uh, Gentis from Joy Street Design is with us as well. Uh, Madam Chair, this is a pre-existing non-conforming structure located in the Jeffreys Point section of East Boston. Um, uh, Mrs. Gloropoulos and her husband uh, intend to occupy this as, prim as their primary residence. Uh, Kat is a 16-year veteran of the Boston Police Department stationed in East Boston uh, and intends so, to- uh, So, uh, so Councillor, as you can tell, we've had a slightly long day. I apologize. So, can you Let me just jump to jump, it. Sure. jump to it, please? I will. I, will. Uh, I, I was all prepped for my presentation, Madam Chair. I understand. Uh, so this is, uh, as I said, look in the Jeffries Point section. It's in the 3F district. As you can see from the shaded area, if we just jump back to that last slide for a second, uh, the houses both left and right uh, pretty much occupy uh, the relatively shallow lots that, the, that exist. We do have some uh, area behind our building that we were proposing to infill. Uh, and then add rear decks, uh, essentially bringing our building back with the decks uh, to the same length of the buildings that are located both left and right. We can go to the next slide, please. Uh, you can see our existing condition here, and we do have a better view of this. The building to the middle uh, is essentially a four-story building uh, with the with essentially half story at the top. We're proposing to finish off that fourth story, which would be consistent with our building immediately adjacent on the left-hand side. Uh, we will preserve the existing structure and perform a complete renovation of the entire building. Uh, next slide, please. And just showing some neighborhood context as well. As you can see, the uh, area has a number of um, uh, taller buildings uh, that have been 
a uh, reasonable so, development. So, so Councillor, how, how are you proposing to change the occupancy from a two to a four? Because sure, I know I you're hiding the yeah, story. Yep, I can go to this go to this slide that you, here we go. This is probably a good one. So you can see here no next slide please. You can see here that the um, upper level uh, is being modified to essentially square off the existing fourth level consistent with the two buildings to our left. Uh, the building to our immediate left has a uh, penthouse condition as well, uh, which is a fifth story. Uh, we originally proposed this as a larger uh, penthouse. We've reduced that through the community process and we do have a elevation of that as well. Uh, you can go to the next slide, please. Just showing our rear of our building. Uh, and again, these buildings, both left and right, uh, pretty much occupy their entire lots. There is a four foot passageway behind. We would incorporate decks on the rear portion of our building. Next slide, please. So just showing our existing conditions here, we can I'll probably jump to the next, to, uh, jump up two slides to show what the renovations will look like. We have those outlined uh, in the next slide. Next slide, please. Oh, next, going forward. Uh, probably up to 13, maybe 14. There we go. So because, here we go. So as we're seeing here, both uh, we're showing the basement and next two levels. We're not proposing any habitable space in the lower level. Uh, at our basement level, we are proposing, uh, you can see the uh, structural elements on the right side of the screen. And then we're renovating uh, units one and units two. Uh, these would be two bedroom, uh, two bedroom, two bath uh, style units. As we move up the building, next slide please. We show unit three and then unit four is at the fourth level um, where you would you would enter uh, on the fourth level and have additional space uh, at that upper level, with, which would be part of that penthouse that would access the private roof tech. Uh, so essentially just reprogramming the entire building, adding that uh, addition to the rear, which would infill the back portion of the property and then squaring off uh, for all intents and purposes, the fourth level with that penthouse level added above. And um, through this non-occupancy of the basement, you meet floodplain regulations? That is correct. We are in the flood zone, so we are not uh, permitted to utilize any portion of that basement for, uh, for any of those yeah, conditions. And it's one of the reasons why we're obviously looking to the vertical addition, Madam Chair, which is pretty common throughout the East Boston neighborhood with the floodplain. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are good. I, I think the addition is consistent with some of the abutting buildings in terms of the filling out of the fourth floor of the penthouse. There is an adjacent that has a similar size penthouse. Um, just to, can I just confirm in, in when I was looking? So it is, you are looking at, is the 18, there's an 18 foot dimension. That's the amount of the added square footage on the, on the floors. Um, I see a third, fourth, you're adding 18 feet of actual enclosed space and then six feet of deck. Is, is, that, yeah. the, is that the addition of the whole space or is that, it's kind of a little bit different. In the, yeah, uh, through, through the chair, Mr. Robinson, um, the, the portion of the building actually has, uh, I believe it's the left side, we can probably go back to maybe right a floor plan. That goes back a lot further. Um, this is more of a, yeah, this is probably a good, ne next slide would be a good area to show. Yeah, you can see where the dotted line shows that the building itself already on the left side uh, goes back further than uh, the right area. So the renovations are um, pretty much involving the back portion of the building, but there is a portion of the building that does go back. We're sort of filling in the missing tooth on the right rear portion and then adding the decks uh, to the rear as well. All right, thank you. No, no further questions. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition to this proposal? Morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Natalia Benitez with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. A board, uh, a butter's voice concerns regarding density, height, the penthouse with roof deck and rear addition. The Jeffries Point Neighborhood Association also opposed this project as well. And our office would like to defer to the board's judgment at this time. Thank you. I do have a raised hand if we don't have anyone else. Uh no, Madam Chair, Secretary here, we do have some letters of support and some opposition. I don't know if some of these letters are either from the past. Uh, there's a few that are in support uh, recently this month. Thank you. Madam Chair, I also believe Councillor Edwards, I don't know if they're on, Councillor Edwards' office was going away on this as well. Okay. Hello, Madam, 
Hello, Madam Chair. This is Jacob uh, Warner from Councillor Everett's office. We do want to uh, weigh in for the record, and we do want to express our support for the project. Um, so please put down that uh, Councillor Everett's uh, supports the project for the record. Thank you. Craig B, go ahead. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. go ahead. Hi, thank you very much for your time. Um, <clears throat> Craig Butner, 59 Webster Street, East Boston. Our family has resided at 59 Webster Street for 23 years, and we are direct about her to 57 Webster. Please know we firmly oppose this project as it's currently proposed. Since the first presentation for this project in June 2020, which was 22 months ago, the developer of 57 Webster Street has been unwilling to listen to the constructive feedback of all abutters, especially the direct abutters at 59 and 55 Webster. The scale of this project as presented five different times has always been too large, affecting the natural light, views, and general scale of the adjacent properties on the entire block of Webster. I am um, referring to the rear addition exclusively, and I don't know if we can go to that rendering. That would be super helpful. No, can you please um, uh, uh, quickly summarize? Yep. Um, okay. So um, generally, uh, they haven't. Um, there's been no dialogue back and forth with direct abutters off, you know, other than the meetings in which they presented this overly sized scheme the entire time. The, okay. the addition in the back. The, absolutely dwarfs the two the two abutters and you can see that in the rendering and okay. they they were never willing to reduce it from you know we, we we gave them suggestions to make it a very reasonable three family and they never wanted to go to that it was always we want a four family okay which is not and, you, Thank and you. are you are you in the house at the corner no i'm a, i'm the one to the right if you go to the rear run rendering if, if, I, if i'm if i'm standing on the street looking at this building yep. Are yep. you on the right or on the left? I'm sorry, I'm on the left. On the You're left. On the okay. 59 cool. Webster. So I don't have a problem with that side of the building okay. at all. It's just the okay. rear. And if you go to the okay. rendering, you can see Got the it. project dwarfs the. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Um. And I have no additional raise hands. Okay. May I respond um, briefly, Madam Chair? Yes, please go ahead. I, I know time is uh, short here. Um. Uh, I, I, I certainly. Uh, with all due respect to Mr. Buckner, I mean, I think he said it best himself. We've been at this for quite some time. There were multiple iterations of this project. We have modified the, the project to try to address the concerns. Uh, and certainly there has been dialogue through the abutter process. Um, it, it seems that, you know, if it's not his way, it's no way. And I know that sometimes that's a difficult um, uh, order to fill. We, we think we've done the best here. Based upon the size and uh, dimensions of his building, uh, we were very uh, clear in trying to not exceed anything uh, that he has on his own property to try to not make this dwarf uh, any of the abutting properties. So I feel uh, th those comments are important in light of Mr. Barker's comments. Thank you. Okay, so given all that information, may I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve a BPDA to that interview. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Calling the next two cases. Calling DOA 124 37504 Ashmont Park. There is a companion case DOA 126 586 6 Ashmont Park. This is for four and for six. Both of them have the same purpose and same violations. Erect a new four-story building with four units, front and rear decks, and five parking spots at the rear. Easement proposed for driveway access to rear parking. <clears throat> a violation of Article 65, Section 8. The MFR in a 3FD zone is forbidden. Article 65, Section 9, the additional lot area is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, the floor ratio is excessive. Article 65, Section 9, the building has excessive in stories. Article 65, Section 9, usable open space is insufficient. And Article 65, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. As I said, Madam Chair, both of these are the same purpose and same violations. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, no, they are. They, are. they, they changed them. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Uh, members of the board, Attorney John Pulgini on behalf of the applicant. And with me today is Eric Zacherson, who is the team architect. 
So <clears throat> four to six Ashmont Park in Dorchester, um, as Mr. Uh, Fortune stated, zoning is three family, 3,000. Four Ashmont Park is 4,118 square feet. So six sorry, Ash sorry, um, please, uh, um, again, the, the zoning is, uh, um, uh, sorry, please repeat what you said. Sure, um, the zoning is 3,000, three, uh, 3, Madam for, Chair. For, for, for which, what, for six Ashmont? For both, for both properties. They're both in the same zoning sub-district. 3F3000, okay. Yep. For some reason, I thought they were in 3F um, triple, in the triple deck. Yeah, three, um, 3FD, correct. Yep, Decker. Yeah, so they're um, both in 3FD. Okay, so, okay, so 3FD uh, with a minimum lot size of 3,000 square feet. Got it. That, that is okay. correct. So, so four ask more Go ahead. Four Ashmont Park is 4,118 square feet. Six Ashmont Park is 4,216 square feet. So as Mr. Uh, Fortune stated, these are identical projects. The proposal is to raise the existing distressed homes and build a new four unit condo with five off street parking spaces located in the rear of the building. The parking will be accessed through a common driveway between buildings to lim limit curb cut Currently, there's two, but by doing this, we'll be able to eliminate one of those to add more on-street parking. And the location of these is, is a three-minute walk to Ashmont Station, and they're located at the end, a dead end street with no th uh, through uh, traffic. Uh, so we the, here. The, sorry, um, I'm. Um, can you tell us about the building, the the building scape? Because I know the three F D district was supposed to be triple deckers. Um, so can you tell us what um, Ashmont Park looks like and how this fits into Ashmont Park? Yeah, so Ashmont Park is kind of a, a blend. There is um, on the street, you have um, a five unit building. Um, you have um, some commercial across the street and uh, two down two properties. Uh, and there's also a vacant lot across the street that at one point had a six family and that was destroyed by fire. And then there's single families on the uh, property as well, on the lot street as well. Okay, so then talk to us through the to the violations then. Sure. As you remember, this came before you guys. Um, BPDA uh, made a recommendation based upon that we deferred, so we went back and we looked at the BPDA uh, recommendation and made some changes. Um, as as Mr. Ehrlich, excuse me, Mr. Fortune stated, it's the four family in a three FD zone, FAR. Um, 1.3 is allowed. We have proposed 1.41 at 4 Ashmont, and 6 Ashmont is 1.38. So minimal FIR violations. I got violation, but that is due to having a common driveway. Yeah, we Right, let me find out who that is. Uh, so, uh, we have Peter County, the one that's at Peter County. You know, we have Peter County, You cannot see Okay, we should be all right. Okay, let's uh, go. Okay, sorry. The side yard violation is due to the common driveway between the two buildings. And that was a uh, purpose for that way that when they first went out to the community, they didn't want a large building, they wanted two smaller buildings and limit the curb cut. So we did the one curb cut in between. Um, no open space. No okay. Okay, so let me ask Mr. Robinson, how are the plans? Um, the plans are good. I mean, I think most of the buildings, I mean, there's not that many houses on Ashmont Park. They are pitched roof. There is a triple that anchors it uh, at the far end, but um, I think no real questions in terms of what's being proposed, pretty straightforward. Okay, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes. Um, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. George Huynh with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office hosted an abutters meeting on November 1st last year. We received opposition from the St. Mark's Area Civic Association in the Ashmont Adams Neighborhood Association. Uh, we received letters of support and opposition at this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. 
Madam, Madam Chair, Secretary, here we do have letters of support and opposition. I think Mr. D'Amico has spoken on this too. I don't know if he's on. Madam Chair, uh, this is also uh, Joe McEcker of City Council at Frank Baker's office. We'd like to go on record in support of the project. Then, um, Doug and Jim, are you here to give testimony on this proposal? Hi, Pinkara. Hi, Doug and Jim. Okay, I'll go to Dale. Send a request to unmute you, Dale. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Uh, Dale Seneschal to Ashmont Park at Direct the Butter. Um, uh, we are totally in opposition. Um, we have a signed letter that we just submitted yesterday because we didn't get the plans for the revisions until yesterday morning. Um, the project is completely dwarfs the existing houses on the street. Um, in the February 8th meeting, the board was planning on, on denying it for density. Um, they did absolutely nothing to address the density. There was no decrease in number of units, no decrease in the number of bedrooms, no decrease in the footprint of the buildings. Um, we have 26 abutters and neighborhood association members in opposition to this that I'm speaking on behalf of today. Um, we did submit the revised opposition letter um, this morning, yesterday, um, it was added to the record this morning by Ms. Aldegracia. Um. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else to speak on this project? Um, Madam Chair, the, is, uh, has the BPDA opinion changed since uh, with the design changes? No, uh, Madam Chair, thank you, Mr. Ehrlich. No, the BPDA doesn't change their recommendations. It's still too big for us. We recommend the denial on both parcels. Madam Chair, yes, have, have you guys to... actually seen oh, the, oh, the new proposal? Oh, oh, please, everybody. Oh, you, Mr. Okay. Bougie, can you hold on? Can everybody hold on? Can Absolutely. we get testimony from the last, last person whose hand is raised? Yep, uh, Doug and Jim, go ahead. Can you hear us now? Yes, we can, yeah. Thank okay, you. thank you. Uh, I'm from the, uh, on the executive board of the St. Box Area Civic Association. And at this point, we oppose the project because the developers have not brought their plans either to the abutters, to the Ashmont Adams Civic Association, or to the St. Box Area Civic Association. So hold as on, George, may as, I as ask George, a question? May I ask a question? When was the last time you were in touch with the applicant? at our January 25th meeting when they came before us and we voted against the proposal because of all of the density. Okay, we sent a letter can, to can the DBA. Hold, yes, yes. Can you hold on for a second? Um, Miss Ambassador, may I hear from the last person who's on the, has a great hand? Yep. Um, two, the 617287, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Good afternoon, Madam Chairman. My name is Bridget Costello, and I live at 222 Ashmont Street. I have lived here for 49 years, and it's directly beside the house on the corner of Ashmont Park. My objection is the amount of traffic. Right now, Ashmont Street is a bit of a nightmare. I actually had to have a no parking zone put in front of my house to be able to get out of my driveway. Okay. Ashmont Park, at the moment, has two cars. Some tenants from the corner, the house on the corner, the five unit on the corner, do park on Ashmont Park. There is no way it would sustain 10 cars, but if there's eight units going in, does that mean there could be up to 16 cars? Okay. There is just thank no you, way that street. Ma'am, okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay, uh, Councillor, um, have you been in touch with the civic, has the plans changed? since you were in touch with the Civic Association in January? Yes, Madam Chair. The plans changed after we came before the board in February based upon the BPDA recommendation. And have you been in touch with the Civic Association? And no, how the, has it changed uh, so that this, go ahead. I'm sorry. So I'll just go through the changes that was when somebody was talking. So the height initially, we had a 43 foot height, 40 foot is compliant, we're at 40 feet. Building alignment, we were at three feet off the street, BPDA recommended five, we went to five. So we're five feet off the street. There was an off street loading as it was not a path from the parking to the building and that was added. So that also eliminated that violation. So we did work to the BPDA design guidelines and what they recommended um, and did the best we could with that. 
Uh, the, the development team actually spent time going to the neighbors. Mr. Uh, Fortune referenced the support letters. I believe they submitted 27 letters of support. Um, okay. That okay, thanks, Mr. Bulginia. Mr. Um, Mr. Hampton, um, I, we don't have, of course, what these um, rediscussions, the BPDA recommendations, but was density a concern? Because it's, it, appears, it appears that the applicant has tried to satisfy all the other issues that were raised in the, in the recommendations. Well, the, the density was a concern. It was a concern from a planning and zoning perspective. It's great that they came down in terms of design, but it's still eight units. And as Mr. Polgini and this board knows, we only make one recommendation. So, uh, so our recommendation stands. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we thought the day would get easier. So let's see, can sure. we have a recommendation? I'll make a motion to approve a BPDA design review. Is there a second? There is no second, so I need an alternate decision, uh, alternate proposal. I'll make a can motion. We, can, we, can we grant I'll relief? Motion, deny without prejudice so they can come back again. Okay, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I have opposed. Okay, I'm in support of the motion, so it's been denied without prejudice. Okay, we'll see you. Thank you, everybody. Thank Calling you. the next case. Calling DOA 1285392 Yes, yes, yes! I'm sorry. Is the person okay? <laughs> yeah, we'll go. <laughs> All right. This is a constructed new single family home on a vacant lot at 98 Crest Hill Road. The violation of Article 51, Section 9, the lot area is insufficient. Article 51, Section 9, lot width is insufficient. And Article 51, Section 9, the building height is excessive in stories. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Attorney Kurt Bletzer, 300 Market Street, Brighton, Mass. For the applicant, good afternoon to everybody. So Kurt, make it easy on us. Okay, tell us what's being proposed. So quite simply, um, we were before the board on February 8th. February 8th, we took a deferral because of the neighborhood concerns. We're proposing a single family house on the lot. Um, the issues that we had, we have three areas. The lot area was insufficient, the width was insufficient, and the building height. As a result of the concerns with the neighborhood, we went back to the neighborhood. We reduced the height um, by three feet. And the biggest issue that they had was owner occupancy versus investors for the neighborhood. And the uh, applicant has agreed to a deed restriction so that it's an owner occupant uh, house. I believe that alleviated uh, the okay, neighbor's so, concerns. Hold on, hold on, Mr. Bletzer. So you can't, there's nothing you can do about the lot area or the lot width. Can we see uh, a rendering? Can you tell us what sheet we should look at? so we can understand if that's um, how the building is going to work. Um, sure, if we don't. Uh, so is, sorry, is there, Jacob, is there, yeah, tell us which sheet, please. Jake, if you can go to the to, uh, plot plan first, to the, to the uh, outside, so we can see the lot, the lot measurements. Not, not onto that, but with, with the house in it. So we are, our lot width, we have frontage. We actually have 51 foot of frontage, but the lot width is about 42 and a half feet wide. Um, because of the way the lot is situated, it comes off of Parsons Street. The front of the building is on, is on Crest Hill Road. And the side with the green space is on landscape side yard is on Parsons Street. So the lot's a, a little different configuration. So the, Frontage is fine, but the other areas um, on the width are not. They are uh, so, forty-two um, and a half. So, Councillor, I'm trying to understand where it says parking one and parking two. Are those garage doors, or is it something related to the land and the so way it looks? Right, that's a garage space underneath. Okay. So there's two spaces underneath in the garage. So we we had one of the concerns with the neighborhood was the the height we've reduced. The reason the building is high where it's at is because of the fact that we put parking underneath. 
we thought that would be more uh, uh, more acceptable and better for for the house and for the neighborhood and for again for it to be a single family and have a owner occupant to come into it. So that raised the height of the building, but the lot width, the frontage is fine. It's the rest of the width on the uh, from the back side that makes it too small. Okay. Got it, uh, uh, Mr. Robinson. How are the plans? Uh, I think the plans are good. It's, it is a there's some topography that they're also dealing with on the site as it slopes down. So. Um, uh, the fact that it's a single family on, on this corner lot, I, uh, no real questions uh, on the proposal. Any questions from the board? Yeah, I'm looking at this plot plan and I'm wondering whether the curb cut, what the what the size of the curb cut is and if it could be reduced uh, yeah. so, that, um, so that the cars can be angled somewhat. Hey, yeah, thank you, Mr. Ehrlich. The uh, curb cut on the actual uh, civil plans and on this would be about uh, 12 foot wide. That would be a BPDA oh. requirement. OK. Part. OK, right. From this drawing, it looks like it's the whole width of the uh, driveway. Yeah. yeah, sorry about that. That's my okay. mistake. OK, that's fine. OK, any other questions? Is anybody here to speak in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to refer judgment to the board. Some background information on the community process. Our office conducted a butters meetings on August 26th and September 27th. Uh, they presented to the Brighton Alston Improvement Association and received their support. Uh, they also we've forwarded a number of letters of support to the board. Uh, people were pleased that a one family would be added to the neighborhood. Uh, we did receive one letter of opposition from a group called the Hobart, Hobart Park Neighborhood Association. Uh, but in that letter, they said they were amenable to supporting the project if the height was reduced and that there was a deed restriction that was introduced to ensure that it would be owner occupied. Uh, from my understanding, those changes have been made by the applicant and we believe that that should address their concerns. Uh, once again, we'll defer to the board. Thank you. Yeah. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Pam Mullaney on behalf of City Councilor Liz Braden would like to go on record in support of this project. As Connor Newman described, uh, the proponents have worked iteratively with the neighbors uh, regarding the uh, strong desire for increased owner occupancy in this neighborhood, which is around 23% owner occupied. On the record, in support. Thank you. Okay, Annabella Gomes, go ahead. Madam Chair, members of the board, Annabella Gomes of the Brighton Austin Improvement Association, we'd like to go on record and support. Uh, we do think that it's important to build single families. Uh, we don't really have too many people coming to us asking to build a single family, and that is uh, the property that would be great for a family to buy and live. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin, go ahead. Can you state your name? Uh, yes. Uh, can I speak now? Yeah, can you state your right. name and address on the record? Yeah, uh, Kevin Carragy, uh, 58 Crest Hill Road, uh, uh, which is the uh, street. So I'm, I'm a director of Butter, and I'm also the president of the Hobart Park Neighborhood Association. Uh, I would like to uh, commend the uh, proponent, and uh, uh, the attorney could speak to this. I've been in touch with them multiple times, even today. We would like uh, to have the covenant for owner occupancy be as close as possible to the city standard uh, owner occupancy covenant. Uh, so for example, we want the covenant to run 90 years and that's standard. So, so, so hold on, uh, Mr. Carrigan, yeah. just, know, just know that this board, this board of appeal um, cannot um, you know, take and put in its record any kind of um, understanding that's been developed with the community, but but thank you for putting that on the record. Um, Could the uh, attorney representing the uh, proponent speak to the owner occupancy issue, please? No, no, um, no. We 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 will. Um, I I will limit that. We are running very late, and I just do need to bring closure to this. Thank you for your comments. Yeah, I have no additional raised hands. Okay, um, given that information, may I have a motion, please? Uh, motion. I'll make a motion to approve with BPA design review. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries.
Thank you. We're calling the next three cases, calling BOA 126, 6730, 4 to 18 Cheney Street. There are two companion cases, BOA 1266, 732, 20 to 28 Cheney Street, and BOA 126, 6736, 3 Schuyler Street. This is for 4 to 18 Cheney Street. This erects a 58,539 square foot, four story, 59 residential unit building with 28 parking spaces, nine dedicated to 20 to 28 Cheney Street, a garage and basement. The violations, Article 50, Section 19. Use is conditional for nine ancillary parking spaces at 20 to 28 Cheney Street. Article 50, Section 20, the maximum building height is 45 feet, the proposed is 55. Article 50, Section 20, the maximum floor to air ratio is one, proposed is 163. Article 50, Section 40.1, with street wall continuity. And Article 50, Section 43, off street parking is insufficient. This is for, sorry. This is for 20 to 28 Cheney Street. You wreck a 10,738 square foot, three story, nine residential unit building with nine parking spaces in the garage of adjacent 4 to 18 Cheney Street. Violation to Article 50, Section 44.2. An existing building alignment, the model calculation not provided. Article 50, Section 28, multifamily is forbidden. Article 50, Section 28, nine ancillary parking spaces conditional. Article 50, Section 29, the additional lot area is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 50, Section 29, the usable open space is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the front yard is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the side yard is insufficient. And Article 50, Section 29, the rear yard is insufficient. This is for three Schuyler, providing vacant 4,029 4, square foot parcel with vacant 2,074 square foot parcel totaling 6,103 square feet and erect a 5,656 square foot, three story, six residential unit building with six parking spaces on the lot. The violation of Article 50, Section 28, a multifamily use is forbidden. Article 50, Section 29, the additional lot area is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 50, Section 29, the usable open space is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the front yard is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the side yard is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the rear yard is insufficient. And Article 50, Section 44.2, the conformity with existing building alignment. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Taronda Ellis uh, from the JPMDC 31 Germania Street in Jamaica Plain. Um, just a quick comment. Oh, hold on, hold on just for a second, Ms. Ellis. Sure. Um, I would like clarification because for some reason I thought we had, okay, actually I'm looking at my notes from the meeting of December 14, 2021. And it looks like at that point, we approved with design review three Schuyler Street. Um, that is correct. That is correct, right? Yes. So, um, so, um, so we should just make sure that we are right away. Let's, can we go ahead and confirm the decision um, for um, three Schuyler Street? Yes, Madam Chair, we have the, uh, the notation on the file that it was approved. Okay, so we so we do not need to make a decision on this today. So let's X out three Skylar Street. Okay. Okay, um, Miss Alice, please can you go ahead and speak through the um, the um, the proposal? In the meantime, anybody who has to make comments on this, please make sure you're raising your hand. And I would like to hear from. Roxbury Grove Hall residents, because I know there's a lot of people from uh, JP who are interested in commenting, but I'd like to make sure that um, residents from the abutting streets and abutting Cheney are being heard, okay? So go ahead, Ms. Ellis, talk to us about 4 to 18 and 20 to 28. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just wanted to uh, thank the members of the board for the early deferral on this. Um, there have been several uh, meetings with residents of the community um, subsequent to our meeting uh, back in December. Um, the project proposal at this point, as I understand it, we have submitted over 100 letters of support from if residents in it the has, immediate. Sorry, Ms. Ellis, it's been a while since we've heard this. So please sure. tell us, uh, describe the project. Tell us if anything has changed since the time you were here. Okay, thank you. Um, so what I will say is that since the time we were there, uh, since we were last with this group, uh, we have had several meetings of, of members of the community and we have worked through a number of the concerns that the, the community raised. Um, so I will be brief given the um, you know, the, the level of intense conversations. What I will say is that we have proposed the, um, this campus, which we looked at previously, of a senior housing um, solution along with some home ownership. And so if we could just scroll to the, um, the site plan, we can kind of all re-familiarize. Who is controlling the slides? If we could go slide down there. Here we go. Next slide, please. So we proposed a multi-functioning um, campus. Uh, here is the senior building at the middle of the site on Cheney Street, 59 units, and then adjacent to that, uh, just immediately to the left, is the homeownership. Um, I will just say I'm going to defer uh, to questions um, by the community. I, I think you will be very surprised and pleasantly surprised that the board um, will hear from the community that we are in a very good space. Uh, so I don't okay. want to take so, a lot of time. So let me just ask if um, my, so so the, the project at four, 4 to 18 is proposed as elderly housing. Yes. Um, and the other ones are proposed as home ownership. Correct. It looks like we the the request from the last time you were here, you did say it was lead silver, all of, all electric, um, and um, we did. I think the question was, um, or the request to you was to study the massing. And also, I think the question was about all the about the parking and drop off. That's correct. And so, Madam Chair and members of the board, one of the things that we feel very strongly about as a community, working with the residents of the neighborhood, was to maintain uh, parking, kind of raised parking. It's not effectively a garage, but it is elevated parking to allow for enough parking below the surface of the the senior building to support. Uh, you know, making sure that we can get cars off the street. Cheney is a very dense um, street, as you know, you're well aware, and members of the community uh, spoke very much about that. Um, so I would like to say that we believe that we're in a very strong place with the community. We're gonna to continue to work with the community, but I do think that unfortunately COVID didn't allow for there to be some substantive conversations about the site. Uh, we've since had those since the board uh, hearing in de December. Okay, and uh, can you tell us how drop-off will pick will happen for uh, the elders? Sure. So we have designed the building such that the ground level below the surface of the uh, just adjacent to the parking lot has uh, elevator access and, and primary entrance. So park cars can pull off of Cheney Street, uh, drive pull into the parking area here as you're seeing it. Uh, and seniors can be uh, easily and accessibly access the building. Um, I think that's a huge improvement uh, with the elevator access along with a nice vestibule for the accessible um, you know, vans or small vans for pickup and drop off. I think that's going to make a, 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 an immediate impact uh, in a positive way. Okay, and then tell us about the home ownership. Are they all affordable? 
Yes, ma'am. All units uh, that we build are 100% affordable and uh, we'll continue to work on design aesthetic with the members of the community and ensuring that we are doing things that are equitable and, and responsible to the homeowners as they would perceive their needs for homeownership amenities. And I think one of the things that was brought up to the last time was that there are a lot of elders in the community. Will there be any kind of way of making sure that those elders are housed in a community that they know and they might have lived in for a period of time? So we often work very diligently with the fir affirmative fair housing marketing team to ensure that we are um, setting aside units for priority. Um, we cannot explicitly overlay a complete neighborhood set aside, uh, but there are ways and avenues that we'll work with uh, the fair marketing team to ensure that we are putting the best face forward on both the amenities. Um, these, these seniors will have access to nursing care um, through a PACE alternative center. Uh, they will have Wi-Fi, and as we know from COVID, you know, a lot of the technical assistance that individuals will need as if there were any barriers to care will be available on site. And what age do you consider elders? I, well, I don't know. I, I can only speak for myself. I'm pushing <laughs> 55 mark, but we are we are getting to that place where we're, we're evaluating early planning, let's say. Okay. So we are looking at 55 plus for residents uh, of this community. Uh, we fully expect that this will be an age and dignity site uh, where we will have adequate open open space uh, uh, as well as indoor uh, community space for for all of us who are pushing the silver wave. Okay, nice. Okay, is anybody here? Um, how are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, the, the the plans look good. I, I, I was not seated at the last time this came through, and and I think it's actually quite nicely stepping along the street, and I think the the van access in sort of on a sort of quiet place is a very nice aspect to it. So I think it, um, no questions. I think it's a, quite a nice proposal. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jason Gint, from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. So this was a BPDA facilitated process, but as was highlighted on the last time that they were before the board, um, they were supposed to go back out and reach out to the community, which they have done at the Sonoma, Sonoma Maple and Shiloh Street Neighborhood Association meeting on January 3rd. And then they hosted their own meeting for the neighborhood to attend uh, on February 22nd. They've also been before Project Right numerous times and also uh, most recently Garrison Trotter Neighborhood Association. I do know that Mike Kozu sent in a conditional letter of support from Project Right for this project that should be received by the board. I believe that was sent over. Uh, the conditional support uh, was just primarily highlighting the fact that they do want to continue working with JPNDC around the number of units and just making sure that it is conducive to what the neighborhood would like to see. And JPNDC has confirmed that they would definitely continue those communications and then also CC myself with those as well. So we are going to be deferring to the expertise of the board for this matter. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary, here we do have those letters that the mayor's office just spoke of. Thank you. Thank you. And Madam Chair, I have a few raised hands. We also have a, uh, a letter from, um, that just came in in the afternoon, but from um, Councillor uh, Fernandez Anderson, Mejia Rusi. They sent one letter in support of the proposal. Um, it should have been sent to an email, uh, but I'll open it up to the floor as well. Mike, do you want to start? Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Yes, my name is Michael Kosu, uh, Project Right 320, the letter A, Blue Hill Avenue. Uh, we are, we've been engaged with uh, JPNDC for uh, a couple year process, uh, getting a budding and nearby residents involved in this process. Clearly, we've worked through a number of issues. We want to continue to work through these issues as, as we go forward. So we're looking forward to continuing this process and uh, we will uh, work closely uh, as we move forward. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Roy Thompson. Go ahead, Roy. Hi, Roy, can you hear me? 
I'll still be on mute. Uh, I'm Melissa Lisa, second. Send a request to unmute you. Oh, yeah. Good afternoon. Is this me? This is yeah. Louis Lisa, 68 Seaford Street, president of the Garrison Trotter Neighborhood Association, 43 years working continuously in the Garrison Trotter area. Um, we just want to thank the board for the opportunity to meet again and have, that have the time to meet with the JP and DC to work out the issues. I think we've come to a resolution that's workable for all sides and, in, and mostly on behalf of the seniors who will be occupying the space and for the residents in the community. And I think that this type of interactive communication can work for other projects if, we're, if given the time. So uh, thank the board and we're in support of the proposal which is, uh, has been written up in support of DMD for calling the last meeting and working with us on this project. Thank you. Okay. Soledad, can you state your name and address for the record, please? Hi, Soledad Boyd, 4 Nazing Court, uh, Dorchester 02121. Um, I am here in support of the project. Thanks very much to the JPNDC for continuing to uh, uh, listen to the community. As someone who is reaching that elderly planning stage, I am in full support of this project and believe that it will provide much needed affordable senior housing as well as community-wide uh, uh, housing. And I appreciate everyone for digging in and, and staying with the process. We have Michael from Rep Malia's office, go ahead. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. I apologize uh, for not speaking before I had stepped out. Um, this is Michael Giordano from Rep Malia's office. Uh, the representative was very pleased the developers and the community were able to meet and negotiate an agreement on this project. I would like to go on record in support of uh, both of the Cheney Street uh, JPN DC projects proposed today, contingent upon the continued and active engagement with residents and other leaders in the community. Thank you. Jessica Boatwright, we're gonna give testimony here. Yes, uh, good afternoon, Jessica Boatwright. I'm the Deputy Director for Housing Development at the Mayor's Office of Housing wanted to speak in support of this project and JPNDC's efforts to create affordable senior housing, affordable home ownership, and um, as they've discussed, on-site pay senior services for both residents of the building and the surrounding neighborhood. We are, as, as others have said, we're really um, encouraged by JPNDC's efforts to engage with members of the surrounding community with with members of local neighborhood associations and their work, especially their work with Project Right and Garrison Trotter Neighborhood Association and the Butters. Um, we are enthusiastic about their commitment to continue to thank you. work thank with you. these folks. Jessica, thank you. I'm sorry, we just are so busy today. No, it's fine. It's fine. Thank you. Um, anybody else? Yep, I'm Christina Martinez. Hi, my name is Christina Martinez. I'm 74 Geneva Ave. I'm a heavily, I heavily support the project. We need affordable senior housing and affordable home ownership opportunities. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Kamalu, go ahead. Hi, this is uh, Kalamu Pieta uh, from District 7 City Council County Office. We want to go on record in support of this project. Um, JPNDC has done a really good job of listening to community voice and engaging with the community, and we hope they continue that. Thank you. And then I do Welcome. have a call. I'm sorry, uh, 617-442-7004. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Maybe no longer wants to get um, I'm not sure if they still want to give uh, testimony. Madam, Madam Chair, Paul Sullivan for City Council at large, Michael Flair, the council if you don't record support. I have no additional raised hands at the moment. Okay, let's get a motion here. Motion to approve a BPDA design review. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, may I suggest, uh, Ms. Ellis, and, um, to continue your conversations with the community so that everything stays on track, okay? Good luck. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, members of the board. Thank you, members of the community. We'll, we'll be in touch next week for our meeting. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, board members, guess what it is? It's the last case of the day. Anyone? <laughs> 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 no time. Case BOA 126 8903, 18 to 20 Parkman Street. 
This is demo of the existing structure, construction of a new uh, of a nine new residential dwelling units with 17 on street parking spaces. The violations article 65, section eight, a multifamily residential dwelling use is forbidden. Article 65, section nine, the floor area ratio is excessive. Article 65, section nine, the height requirement is excessive in stories. And article 65, section 42.2, conformity with existing front alignment of the block. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Morancy. I'm an attorney with the business address of 350 West Broadway in South Boston. Madam Chair, members, in light of the six-member uh, six board, uh, I wish to request an administrative deferral. Hey. Motion to defer. Motion to defer. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? The date, please. You'll have a date of uh, April 26th at 11.30. Uh, Mr. Fortune, I'm sorry, could we request a later date? Uh, I, I think that we may also wish to revise plans. Okay, we can do uh, 524. Is that sufficient enough for you? Uh, what would be the date after that? Uh, is there a uh, we're into June, so give me two seconds. I've got to look at the list. And I ask only because uh, if there are revisions, the plans examiner is going to have to review them. We can do June 21st at 1130. Uh, let's do that, please. Okay. Okay, okay we'll, see, we'll see you then. Thank you for making our day, Mr. Moranzi. You, you, you're <laughs> welcome. Have a good day. Everybody, uh, thank you so much for recording stopped. Long this meeting. Recording in progress. Thank see you. See you in about a few weeks, okay? Bye. 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 Thanks. Recording stopped.